Good evening. Welcome to Fantastic Dimensions. Um, tonight, I am but a player, a pawn in uh, Neil's game. So I will hand it straight over to you, Neil, and you can tell everybody what we're doing. Yes. So uh, this evening is a game called Clockwork and Chivalry um, by Renaissance Games Publishing. Uh, it is an alternative history of the English Civil War. Uh, in which uh, the parliamentarian forces make use of advanced engineering and clockwork, and the royalists make use of alchemy and magic. Um, and uh, what we'll do is we'll kick off with a sort of brief introduction to the general historical background, and then we'll get straight into the introduction proper. So in June 1645, the parliamentarian forces under Major General Cromwell met the Royalist army led by Prince Rupert of the Rhine at Naseby. The new model army consisted of the newly constructed clockwork cavalry regiments and three massive war machines called the Leviathans. Prince Rupert's army of Oxford was augmented by alchemists trained at the eponymous university. Between them, the instruments of brass and steel and the wielders of mystical forces inflicted terrible carnage upon the foot soldiers of the other side. In the course of the battle, King Charles I was captured after a foolhardy countercharge, and after the briefest of battlefield trials, was condemned and executed for treason. Shocked by the power of destruction now within their grasp, both sides retreated from the field, and a stalemate has now overtaken the realm. Prince Rupert's court in Oxford pretends to govern the nation in the name of the exiled child king, Charles II. Cromwell, now named Lord Protector, retains control of London and Parliament, though in practice he rules through the fear of his clockwork troopers, the New Model Army. The winter of 1645 to 46 has proved one of the worst in living memory. Snow, frost, ice and mud have reduced the ability of either side to make strategic gains, and so both sides have settled down to a period of consolidation. In the West Country, the Welsh borders in the North, the Royalists have begun hunting down the so-called mechanical preachers, parliamentarian sympathisers who combine knowledge of the new engineering with Protestant piety. At the same time in London, the home counties and the East Midlands, Parliament has unleashed a wave of investigations to seek out and purge all those suspected of trafficking in magic of any sort, and especially the damnable science of alchemy. At the same time, the warring parties are beginning preparations for next season's campaigning. Commissioners and inspectors crisscross the countryside, making lists of men, materiel and resources it can be seized when the time comes to restart hostilities. So it's now February 1646. On the outskirts of the Lincolnshire village of Crowland, on the border between the Parliamentarian Eastern Association and the Royalist holdings along the River Humber, two parliamentary commissioners are making their way across the snowy fields and icy Fenland marshes. After days of driving snow, today has dawned cold, crisp and clear the sun blindingly bright, reflecting off the white blanketed ground. The commissioner's horses, fetterlock deep in snow, struggle to bear the swaddled figures across the landscape. In the distance can be seen the hulks of windmills that drain the water from the surrounding fens. More immediately, on the road to Crowland, a small church stands on a low hill, a hundred yards or so from the road. Peculiarly, it can be seen that, despite the cold weather, the great oak doors of the church stand open. So now we will introduce our two parliamentary commissioners. And if we will start with uh, Ian, a word or two. Sure. <clears throat> I am uh, Commissioner Gabriel Thorpe. Uh, he is a middle class witch finder. He has uh, spent a good portion of his adult life studying um, the intricacies of witchcraft and the uh, pursuit and persecution of these uh, alchemists that we speak of. Great. And John? <clears throat> I will be portraying uh, Gregory Wiskard. He is a middle-class highwayman, a privateer for the parliament, and uh, he's left a, led a <clears throat> rough and ready life, one would say of crime, but uh, now he has been focused and reinforced for the parliament to bring these evil witches and their black-blooded ilk to bear. Okay, great. So the two of you, horses struggling through the snow, even though you're on a main road, 
um, you see, see this church standing, this kind of great grey box on what for East Anglia and what for the Fenlands count as a hill. Actually, it's probably no more than about six meters above, six feet or so above the general uh, ground level around you, but um, high enough to make the building predominant in the landscape. And uh, as you can see, the doors, despite the fact that today is cold and snow covers the ground to a depth of two or three feet in some places, the large oak doors of the church are open. Also, under the sunlight, you can just see something odd. On the hill, around the hill, around the edge of the church, you can see something glittering on the snow, reflecting the light. <clears throat> In the snow, do we have any obvious signs of tracking, feet, horse trail, dragging, that sort of thing? Um, from the way that you're approaching, which is kind of from the east, uh, no. It appears to be entirely virgin snow. Is there a chimney on this church, as in like a rectory or something like that attached to it? There doesn't appear to be. It appears to be standing entirely alone on the hill. And being that it's, um, like, I, does it look like there's any light coming from within the church? No. Okay. Well, that's odd, don't you think, Gregory? Indeed. However, it may be uh, some momentary shelter from this weather. I think we should investigate. Agreed, Gabriel. <clears throat> And uh, he will draw his trusty street sweeper, and uh, just in case we need to clear the clear the pews, as it were, and we'll approach. Okay. Gabriel uh, will fall in behind him, as he usually does in any kind of a tense situation such as this. Gabriel, uh, you know, aside from his uh, his coat and his basic uh, accoutrements, doesn't really uh, carry anything except for a small short sword type uh, weapon. Okay. Um, you can see sort of, you know, a few yards off the main road, there is um, a sort of wooden, what's called a lich gate. It's like a small open gate, um, which you can just about get under while still mounting your horses, if you kind of duck down, which clearly enters into the churchyard. Um, you can see sort of a few isolated snow-covered gravestones um, uh, but there's no immediately obvious sign of a track or a trail until you get to the gate itself. And there you do see a series of obvious tracks of horsemen. And yet there are no horses to be seen? There are no horses to be seen. Looking down, you can see that they obviously approached from the, from the west, whereas you've approached from the east. They look pretty fresh. If I um, were to climb down off of my horse and look closer, would I be able to maybe try to discern how many horses there may have been? Certainly, you may make a track roll. I will certainly try. I would say no. I rolled a 74. It's a, a, a tangle of horses, hoof prints. You can't tell how many. They appear to be going in sort of both directions, both toward the gate and away from the gate. You can't tell in which order they were laying or anything like that. Mm, it's too muddled for me. I can't make sense of it. <clears throat> say that there were definitely horses here. Yeah. Anything more than one presents an issue. So <clears throat> we see no horses there. If they are sacrilegious types, they could have driven their horses into the church for cover from shelter. Ah, uh, but then they might make noise. We would hear them or perhaps smell them. Do I smell horses? No. Okay. It, the, the air has that peculiar quality of sort of sterility that comes with kind of heavy snow. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the gate, are there any sort of... Um, Icons of paganism, so like uh, you know, little stitched men, you know, bowls of blood, that little eyeball, that kind of crap. Nope, nope. It seems a perfectly ordinary sort of lich gate of the kind where marriage ceremonies are often performed at this sort of time. It's just well, a 
wood, wooden wooden shingled roof, pitched roof, and then coming down to four large beams. And on each of the beams is a single simple wooden gate. How far is it from the uh, church to the gate? Mm, 200 yards at most. Oh, through the snow. All right. Well, my friend, should we approach on foot or on horse? Well, if we're going to go into the church, we should probably approach on foot. So maybe we should tie the horses here to the gate. I'll begin doing so. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Tie them off. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. Um, so sort of lash the horses to one of the wooden posts and um, sort of jumping down into the snow. Um, I'm assuming you're both wearing riding boots. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. So, yeah, I, think so. I would think we're um, suitably clothed, clothed for uh, the, the season and the weather. Mm -hmm. uh, so you sort of push aside one gate and push aside the other. You notice that uh, the, uh, the um, mounted horse track continue through the gate and up towards, make it create a path towards the church. Of course they do. Uh -huh. Again, um, a tangle of um, horse of hoof prints in the snow. I'm just going to keep um, all of my senses pricked as as uh, well as possible. You know, listening for any um, untoward sounds, keeping my nose to the wind just in case I get a a, a change. Especially with the uh, the sterile smell that we have in the air currently, I think it would be a little bit easy to kind of notice if there were a sudden change. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and and of course, my eyes wide and kind of looking. Since I'm behind him, I'd probably constantly be kind of looking back over his shoulder, looking checking back at the horses, etc. Yeah. Um, well, as you're, as you're going up the only hill for miles, uh, you can... So as All you, six feet of it. Yeah, you, you can sort of get... You, and, of course, it's, you know, you've got this white blank canvas all around you. It's very easy to kind of pick out anything in the landscape. You're not going to be easy to be snuck up on here at all. No problem. I just wanted you to be aware that I was trying to be aware. Mm -hmm. as, as, we're, as we're approaching the church, you have the, uh, the front doors and then the corners and then uh, assumedly windows... Yes, uh, the, 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 the horse tracks appear to lead straight towards the door, which is in the southern wall of the church. You are basically approaching the church from the south. I would like to approach from the corner of the building so that my straight on view would be the stonework on the corner. And therefore, perhaps anyone else's view would be a, a blind uh, spot, as it were. OK, so you basically you want to head towards the western end of the building underneath the little bell tower. Um, because the nave stretches west to east from the door, so you've got right. So I'm going to try to use the stonework as a as a blind spot. Okay, so you go crunching off this sort of limited trail that these previous um, horsemen have created for you, um, sort of knee deep in the snow, crunching across to get a sort of slightly more defensive angle. Um, although Gabriel, are you going to follow this tactical advice or just keep trudging? No, I'm going to follow. I'm going to stick close to my friend here, um, because if there is some kind of an ambush or anything of that sort, I would feel definitely a lot safer being uh, close to him. Now, typically, do I'll the... struggle through the snow and and maybe you know complain a little under my breath about it. But do the loyalists or the royalists? I'm sorry, uh, they typically wear obvious or different clothing. Is it going to be a no? They don't wear their mustaches differently. Nothing, right? Nope. <laughs> the special royalist mustaches. <laughs> they might they might twirl them, the evil twats. Right. Wax them up with a little curl. They're not gonna make it that easy, I must Greg. All right. Very good. Okay. So you sort of circumnavigate towards the western end of the church where the sort of low, stubby little tower is. He um, will keep his ember going for his matchlock. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, you can see sort of scattered along the length of the nave as you approach, you can see sort of glittering, um, sort of uh, strange glittering and refracting, reflecting something laying on the snow outside the windows. Um, can you, uh, actually, I don't think I'll need, you, then you, it's then that you realise that all the windows appear to be black and broken and broken. They're just voids. There's no glass in them. 
Uh, and is that what, what is reflecting the light? Seemingly so. Interesting. How, how close are we to the nearest window? Uh, to the nearest nave window, you're sort of past the, past the south door near the tower, um, probably about mm, 15, 10, 15 yards. I'll sigh deeply and try to trudge through the snow towards it a little bit. Um, try and basically, I just want to identify and make sure that is the glass that's uh, glistening in the light. Uh, in order, something arcane. In order to approach closely, you'll either, well, have to do one of two things. You'll have to walk around the west end and approach the north side of the church. But if you want to go directly to the south side of the nave, you'll have to walk in front of the open doors. <clears throat> hmm. While he ponders this, Gregory is going to make for the open doors. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll, uh, I, I'll just stick behind Gregory. Before, before trudging out across the opening, I want to make sure. I'll, I'll just follow his lead. But I'm very curious about that, that glistening. Okay. So, Gregory, you come sort of stepping in front of the porch, which extends a little way from the south wall of the nave, with these large oak doors, both of which are open. They open inwards, um, and they're hanging open. And uh, just sort of because of the very brightness of the light outside with the sun reflecting off the snow, you, it actually takes you a second or two to sort of readjust your eyes to the shadows inside the porch. Um, and yes, you've got a little little stone porch with little stone benches on left and right side, and then a further single large door leading into the church proper. This too is open inwards. It has a large iron latch, but it's uh, currently just open about maybe it's, it's actually fully open, and it's about a meter and a half wide, this door. So it's a big door. Mm. Anything um, combat-related? Is there uh, blood, gore, viscera? Nope. That... nope. Okay. Nothing at all. A bit late to the, uh, to the party, so to speak, Gabriel will now draw his uh, short sword. Okay. Um, from where you are hovering behind Gregory at the door, you can now get a better view of the sort of glittering underneath the windows. And yes, um, half, sometimes half buried in the snow, other little fragments lay on top of the snow. Little sort of ruby red, magenta blue, green, pale green, almost sort of white glass. Stained, stained glass. Yeah. Stained glass, yeah. Shattered and clearly broken and shattered outwards. All the glass appears to have fallen or been blown out into the snow. Interesting. Um, can you both make me perception rolls, please? Yes. That's a success. I rolled a 21 under a 67. Mm -hmm. I got a 35, which is... I have a 34, so I did not make it. Okay. So, um, Gregory, your attention is turned to the doorway, obviously, is the area of potential threat. So, Gabriel, as you're looking around at this glass, you sort of, it suddenly strikes you that um, lying amidst the glass, and you can't work it out for a second or two, and then you realise what it is. It's, it's, it's a robin. Um, wings outstretched, bright scarlet breast feathers pointing up towards the sky. It's two little feet also clawed together and pointing towards the sky. It's a perfectly dead robin laying in the snow. Is there, ooh, with my, uh, my lore, my knowledge of witchcraft or anything, is there any kind of a, an occultic or uh, witchcraft um, sig significance to this? Or You can give me a check. Sure. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a at three under 60. Okay. Um, I mean, birds, cockerels, you know, all kinds of animals often feature in witchcraft rites and rituals. And there are specific rituals about um, walking around churches with animals um, to uh, pre prepare them for enchantments. But nothing so much about just leaving dead birds near churches. And it's, mm -hmm. as you're contemplating this, there's a kind of sort of small sort of yew tree just a way off to the east a little way. And as you're sort of glancing around, you suddenly realize that laying around this yew tree are one, two, three, no, four, five, six 
more birds. Chaffinches, bullfinches, little common English winter winter resident birds, all laying perfectly the same way. Snow. Dark magic, I would think, Greg or Gabriel. Yeah, that's what Gabriel would still say. It would uh, kind of tap Gregory on the shoulder gently and gesture towards the robin and then towards the other birds around the tree and say, be careful, Gregory. I suspect there may be dark magic afoot here. Look at all the dead birds. Indeed. He'll blow his, the, the, the fuse nice and hot so it'll fire. Mm -hmm. And And... If I had not done so yet, he will make his way into the building. Okay. And the sort of hobnails of your boots ring with a metallic clang as you step onto the stone flagstones of the porch. Um, and it's it's literally sort of three or four steps until you can reach the main door of the church and kind of peer inside. From where you are, looking straight into the western end of the church, you can see um, a fairly traditional stone font with a little wooden cover um, and the beginnings of some pews on your right, leading down the main body of the nave. Be careful, brother. Also, the glass was all broken from within. There may still be something inside. Hmm. Hopefully something that lead can resolve. He'll follow through. Okay. Stepping in, you can now turn right, looking down the nave. The whole building is peculiarly brightly lit because of the snowy conditions. It's sort of stark, very white, um, sort of almost sort of, um, sort of allergeny, sort of cold white light illuminating the whole building. Um, and you take in two or three things at once. First, there's a little door in the north wall about halfway down the nave, which is also open. Letting in another stream of light. Secondly, all the major windows have been shattered and smashed. A few of them have still little bits of lead glass and tr lead tracery and glass hanging in them, but overwhelmingly they've been smashed or blown out. How much experience would you say Gregory has had with these spellcaster types? Um, I'm content for you to make a judgment call on that. Um, magic is certainly real. Witchcraft is certainly real. Alchemy is definitely real. He has a fairly uh, high IQ, and he has some experience with explosives. So I would say it would not be a stretch to assume this is some sort of magical explosive or uh, alchemic. Uh, yes. I mean, um, the royalist forces, the, the alchemists amongst the royalist forces are well known for their capacity to make violent explosions, fireballs and things like that. There's no sign is, of is there, is there evidence of that as far as like the pews and other soft targets? Are they thrown in the direction? <laughs> no. Nope. Hmm. They all seem to be intact. Mm. So perhaps this is more like... Uh, Iconoclast, you know, the destroying religious artifacts. Perhaps. Um, so, uh, so um, yeah, what kind of church is this, by the way? It's a Anglican very, or? A very standard sort of um, medieval Fenland church. Um, uh, but, Gregory, can you give me a uh, regional law check, please? Well, actually, you can you can <laughs> anyone, but Gregory in particular. Very well. Making my role thusly a 25 out of my regional lore for the Fenlands is 28. So I just made it. Okay, good. Uh, right. I, I will come back to that role in just a second. So as your sort of your gaze sort of follows up the nave, traveling west to east from where you're standing towards the altar, you've got this little open door in the north wall. You've got these blown out windows, and then your eyes come up towards the main part of the nave itself. A couple of things strike you, one of which is a, a, a wooden barrel, and standing next to that, a leather pail about halfway up the nave. Clearly not church furniture. Then... At the far end, the east end, where the altar is, you've got two or three little steps. Then you've got two things. The most striking thing is the dead body. 
a figure laying sprawled on the steps at an angle which nobody would volunteer to stay laying in if they had any choice about it. Do they have any uh, vestiges of religious clothing, that sort of thing? From, from this distance, all you can see is that they're wearing dark clothing, um, consistent with um, clerical garb. Okay. But um, the other thing is you're traveling beyond that. You've got a communion rail, an altar rail, and a communion table. And that is almost as odd as a dead body in a church in this part of the world. That's a very high Anglican, what's called a Laudian um, quality of worship. Hmm. Uh, this is out of my realm. Gabriel, uh, he'll stride. He'll stride forward to take more of a center position in the church while he he investigates the body, or at least takes a look. Yeah, I guess it will um, kind of move forward now. My curiosity getting the best of me, but before I go to investigate the body, I'm curious about that barrel mm -hmm. um, and the pail, the bucket. Yep. Um, so I would kind of approach those gingerly and trying to peer inside. I suppose the is the um the barrel is closed or is it is it open at the top no, or anything or it's actually opened at the top and you can okay. see a, a kind of a tin ladle or large deep spoon type ladle type thing kind of hanging off the rim. Um and you can before you kind of get to it, you can smell straight away what it is. It's lime wash. Lime wash. Um, and you can see sort of spatters of it on the stonework around the barrel and the, uh, and the pail. And there's, the, the ob there's an object in the pail which turns out to be a kind of like a, 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 a brush. This is a brush, a ladle, a lime wash. Lime wash is into uh, lime wash stone. Yep. And you okay. can see, you can see um, where, it's been, where it's been left. If you look immediately to the, to the south on the wall of the nave, there has been an, an attempt to lime wash over um, a uh, painting of uh, what appears to be the Ten Commandments. I think you kind of classed. Yeah, I think you were right, Gregory. Uh, I'll move towards the body then. I'm guessing it's going to be the uh, the priest. He is in. He is indeed dressed in the sort of everyday, non-ceremonial garb of a uh, of a of a priest. Yes, uh -huh. uh, dark clothing. He's wearing sort of uh, leather latchet shoes. Um, he's laying face up with his butt sort of um, with his head down, so his feet are facing towards the altar up the stairs, and then his whole body is kind of laid splayed down the stairs, with his head at the bottom. His Face, his nose, his mouth is bloodied. I will uh, get closer to uh, try to investigate uh, for any other wounds. See um, how he, how this man died. Obviously, he's been beaten about the face, but that could just be from falling down the stairs. Um, uh, uh, if you have a relevant skill, yes. Otherwise, we'll do uh, intelligence times two as percentile. Um, I have insight. I have perception. Insight's probably yeah. more for like, uh, like a evaluate. Yeah, sensing motives and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, I'll just go with a double intelligence. Yep. Intelligence you. That's probably better than my yeah first aid. <laughs> so, uh, no, 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 no. I rolled a seventy-six. Um, he's quite, quite dead. Um. He's bloodied around the nose and mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I will try to... Um, is, is he got rigor mortis? Uh, no. So he's not been dead long. Okay, I will try to move him um, into a little bit of a more um, dignified position. <laughs> yeah. He's just, not just laying here ass up. You, you, you pull him down these sort of three or four shallow, small little steps... I'll lay him out on his back, cross his arms over his chest or something. The, uh, the, the, the wooden soles of his shoes clack, clack, clack down the stone steps as you draw mm -hmm. him down on the nave and uh, put him in a sort of comfortable position. Notice, Gregory, he's, uh, he's not stiff yet. 
It's not been dead long. Uh, at this point, Gregory is not even paying attention. He's keeping his eye out, out and about, knowing that his input isn't necessary for this. He just will agree, uh, yes, of course. So we'll examine the communion table. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's uh, this is this is your high Anglican sort of you know um, sort of commun yeah high Anglican communion table. So the sort of thing that in this part of the world, generally speaking, does not go down at all well with your more godly parishioners. Why? Because it's considered to be too close to papacy, smacks. Mm -hmm. to ceremony and high churchdom right uh, whereas these the, the the most not all but the predominant feeling in this part of the world is one of um very low church minimal ceremonies minimal formality mm -hmm. etc no idolatry all that stuff yeah yeah okay hmm i guess i'll also check to see i mean I assume some of the stuff, some of the um, paraphernalia for such a, a communion communion table might be of some value. Does it look like it's, anything's been taken or is there anything of value still lying here that just trying, trying to kind of rule out potential just robbery? Unfortunately, in these troubled times, sort of church plate doesn't get left out. It's probably shut up in a, a vestry somewhere off the nave. Um, if it follows the usual pattern, there'll be a um, uh, off off to the uh, sort of off to your right, off to the south side of the church. There'll probably be a little vestry door. Well, I'll. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a, a big cross somewhere here on, in the church too, maybe up above the altar or something. Or do they do that here? Uh, they do, but there isn't one at the moment. There's just the table okay. covered covered with a sort of green and gold communion cloth. Right. And the uh, the priest, does he wear a cross? He does, actually, yes. He's wearing he's wearing a little crucifix around his neck. Yeah, I'll kind of glance at it momentarily and then just sigh, and then I'll check his uh, pockets and his person to see if he has any keys or anything on him, or um, even a purse. Yes, uh, he doesn't have a purse. Um, and in fact, uh, as you sort of search him... Um, um, have you got like a law, L-O-R-E, in sort of theology or church affairs or anything like that? No, no, I just have East Anglia witchcraft and research. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, so you sort of ruffled it. Um, he's, he's not, not a very got, religious man myself. No, no. Um, he's not got a coin purse on him, but he has got um, sort of uh, a leather pouch in which are two keys, um, one of which is a big, heavy iron thing. And the other one is a much smaller and much more modern. Okay, well, I'll take both of them. I'll just take the pouch, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, and I will work my way over towards the, um, you know, the uh, the main altar area, and I'll mm -hmm. start to look to see if there is a um, uh, a cupboard or a cabinet. Okay, so um, you sort of uh, rifle through his pockets, um, Gregory. What are you doing while this is carrying on? Well, if there's no um, movements or other signs of um, key interests, he's going to make for whatever another person would have gone for. So the other open door, I believe, would be at his mm -hmm. next point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, it's um, it, you just have to basically cut through the line of pews to the north wall of the church. And, uh, yes, you've got a small door that you'd have to duck to get through. Um, quite narrow as well, barely barely wide enough for one person to pass through. Um, uh, and immediately you sort of look, you realize that this dude, like all the other doors you've seen so far, opens inwards and gives out immediately onto a, a thick layer of snow in which you can see tracks. Interesting. They appear to approach the church um, from the north. Um, coming in through what appears to be a smaller gate on the north side of the church. Um, do you want to make me a track roll? Sure. Stand by. Uh, I got a 58, so I did not pass it. I have a 28. Okay. All you can tell is that it's not many people um, traveling on foot. 
He's going to go back in, and as he does so, he's going to secure the door. Yep, it's easy enough to shut. Um, you can just close it and put a, and uh, close the latch. It has a latch. It also has a key, a lock, an old-fashioned lock, but there's no key in it. Yeah, he won't lock the lock, but he might put the uh, the hook of the lock through. Um, what you, what what it does? What it also contains is a very old primitive lock, which is a little piece of um, iron which you can shove in atop the latch to stop it being lifted. Very well, he'll do that. Okay. And while while he has this in mind, he's going to go to the other door, the main door. See if he can secure that. See if we can keep from being surprised. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this one has no lock on it, um, but you can latch it, in, um, but not secure it in any way. Um, so you can latch it shut. I mean, I guess you could hunt around and find something where you might have something on your person that you can shove in the latch to stop it being lifted. Yeah, there, there's a, a wedge of wood, a, a book, uh, something that he can kick under the little corner there, and it'll continue on. Yeah, I mean, even something as simple as a wadded up piece of match cord. Sure. Shoved in there will will keep it will 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 sort of hamper anybody trying to get in. Okay. Uh, okay. So back to Gabriel. Um, so you retrieve these two keys from the priest's body, mm -hmm. the altar, and yes, um, behind a column um, off to your right, i.e., the south wall of the church, you can see um, a small door, uh, which uh, even from here you can see has been broken open. Ah, uh, oh, that probably answers my question, but I'll just uh, go and look to see. Obviously, uh, is there anything left inside? Um, it gives into uh, a room. Maybe, uh, obviously, it's not just a cupboard. It gives into. Oh, I'm sorry. It's it's a it's a door door. Mm -hmm. Apologies. Okay. In that case, then yeah, I will carefully kind of go up and peer in. Yep. Uh, you can see it's an old door, but it's been forced open recently. You can see the kind of white, pale splinters of wood around the jaw jam and the lock. Uh, make me uh, either insight or perception, um, something like that. Okay. I'm pretty good at both. Um, yeah, I rolled a 10. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a new lock, um, not dissimilar to the sort of thing that would open with the new key that you've just picked mm -hmm. up. The smaller of the two keys, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's yeah, an uncommonly good lock. Probably, it's probably worth a good bit of money, too, that lock. Not anymore, because it's kind of been damaged as somebody basically forced the door open. But yes, once... Right. Again, it it would have been... Right. Okay. Um, the door opens inwards. It's only open about sort of four or five inches, and inside it is strangely dark compared to the bright light. Mm. Then I will kind of step back away from the door along the wall and um, kind of go, Gregory. If, he, if he's within sight of that, he will definitely make his way. Mm -hmm. Yep. Gesturing towards this uh, dark doorway with my, my hatted head. But e e even a whisper in an empty church, you can hear this perfectly Good. well. Other end of the building, yeah. I'm sure anybody who's inside that room probably here too, but you know, <laughs> yeah. that's why I moved away from the door. <laughs> okay, so yep, Gregory, you approach and see the same thing this sort of small door broken open. All right, and it's uh, broken in the same direction as all the others. Yep, they, they all the doors appear to open inwards, so this one has been kind of attacked with some sort of you know, jemmy or crowbar or something. And it is definitely dark. There's no way to light it in there. We don't have any uh, obvious torches or lanterns in the in the church itself. Uh, there are plenty of candles here about, and I'm sure you probably have flint and steel on your person, don't you? Yeah. As he holds his, uh, oh, he's got the little spark of his matchlock going, so he'll use that. Oh, there's a they're like a little uh, one of those little candelabra type things, you know? Not candelabra. Yeah, it's candelabra, right? Holds like multiple candles. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, here it tends to be sort of um, quite large candlesticks with big pillar candles sort of. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll just grab one of those big pillar candles and I'll hold it up for him to light. I'll hold it in my left hand since I've got my little short sword in my right hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so holding up, the first thing you see is the boot um, sort of just, just, just marginally sort of uh, sticking out from behind the door in the room. 
a riding boot. He will kick the boot. I'll hold the candle up high over Gregory's head to try to provide him as much light as I can. He'll kick the boot and keep the uh, the gun pointed in that direction. Okay. Um, it's uh, kicking it uh, reveals it evidently contains a foot and presumably a leg as well. But you can't see anything else at the moment because the door, as I say, is only open about four inches or so. And um, this figure is lying against the side of the door. Well, shall we? And he'll, he'll give the, the door a good nudge. Um, yep, and a nudge is what's required because um, this, this guy is obviously laying against the door and you sort of push it and you can feel the dead weight of him moving as you push against the door, um, opening it up sort of about a foot, foot and a half um, until you can definitely see the, the other boots and the sort of britchard um, legs and knees of um, what you presume to be from, his, from the clothing a male figure laying on the vestry floor. Mm -hmm. Same sort of um, vestments. As I say, is he also in clerical, like common clerical garb? No. No, he's, he's dressed in sort of a quite um, reasonably good, but homespun woolen breeches. The riding boots are sort of mass-produced leather, not great quality. Um, there's also a very, very strange smell in here. It's 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 acrid. It's it's animal in nature. It's sort of it, um, for those of you um, who probably Gregory, you might know this. Um, when they make um, uh, when they make match cord, one of the things they do is that they mm. smell ammonia derived from urine. It smells a bit like that, sort of ammonia like smell. Alchemy, my friend. Mm. Okay, I uh, will kind of. Gently pull the candle back a little bit, just uh, afraid of potentially uh, lighting anything uh, that might go boom. Uh, do you do you see any uh, do you see any cords or any 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 uh, barrels of pitch or or oil or anything of that sort? If he if he can't see it, he's going to grab the uh, the leg and pull the guy out into the light. Okay. Yep. Um... So you sort of grab hold of him and haul, haul him down. Um, and, uh, okay. Yeah. So basically what you've done is you've got the door open about a foot and a half. So you can see into the right-hand half of this room. Uh -huh. And on that right-hand side, you can see um, what appears to be a, quite a small wooden bookcase. But the books are sort of scattered all over the floor um, further into the room. Uh -huh. um, you can also see what looks to be a large church chest, probably containing vestments and documents and things like that. Um, the room is un is is uncommonly dark, but you can't. And I mean, there's a little bit of light coming in, but it's much much darker than you would think if it's got a window the same as all the other sort of, all the others in this building. Um, but that's all you can see until you open. Uh -huh. Um, so you can pull and, this guy by his boots, um, Gregory, down towards your end of the door. Um, and he sort of ragdoll-like curls up in a ball in front of you as you manhandle him. Um, a young man, um, maybe in his 20s, pale as marble, quite, quite dead. I will go into the room, foolishly. Um and uh, I'll go to examine that chest. Is it open? Is it closed? Locked? Okay. So you, uh, once the once the body's out of the way, you sort of push your way in. Yeah. So I feel, I, for for you know, I feel confident now that the room must be empty. Surely this dead man was the only one in there. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So moving from left to right as you're standing in the doorway. On the left, a long wooden bench, on which. Alembics, retorts, jars, um, glass containers and bottles of, and vials of every description set up elaborately connected with um, tubes held shut with corks and so on and so forth. Oddly, about half of them 
in a very discreet patch from right to left, as you look at the bench, are shattered and broken and have been scattered around. Then the carnage stops dead and everything else appears to be in good order. Then straight in front of you, where there should be a window, and in fact there is a window, but it's got a large wooden screen covering up most of it. Hmm. There's just a sort of a little arc of window at the very top of this high wooden screen. Then on the right in the corner, you've got the chest, and then you've got the little bookcase with the books scattered all over the floor. In the middle of the room is a new wooden, quite plain wooden box. And this is obviously all uh, alchemical paraphernalia, I presume? It certainly is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> as far as them covering up most of the light from the window, would I have any way of knowing if that is something that they did simply for discretion or if it's something that they do because perhaps some of these alchemical agents they're, they're handling would be sensitive to light? Um, you don't know, probably don't know enough about alchemy to know definitively. Probably not. But you, but you know that anyone in this part of the world would have to be carrying out alchemical experiments in secret. Of course, yeah. So it's probably for discretion. Uh -huh. uh, so returning to Gregory and this body. Yes. Uh, um, so he's, there is, there's this young man crumpled up in front of you. Um, are you going to examine him more closely? I, I will. Uh, are there any obvious uh, indications of dealing with chemicals like burns and colorations or anything like that? No. Um, there are give, uh, give me a perception check please stand by 47 and my perception is a 34 so we did not make it okay so I'll give you the things that are clear um, his clothing is spattered with white some kind of white paint you would guess lime wash sure okay got it Secondly, the knuckles on his right hand are skinned and swollen, bloodied. Very good. Me mechanically speaking, uh, this, this game does not have the uh, luck feature, correct? Correct. Okay, very good. Uh, so more than likely, he was here to do the work and uh, was subjugated to the whims of these alchemists, most foul. Does this typically type of building have a, uh, a cellar? Uh, in, in this part of the world, they don't tend to build churches with crypts because of the groundwater level. Mm, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Having kind of um, gathered myself now after seeing such a shocking display of obvious um alchemy going on in a, in a church of all places i will now move towards the uh, chest mm -hmm. to uh, to examine it okay yep uh it's got a simple sort of metal hasp you know you just sort of uh, pull the hook mm -hmm. and you can lift it open okay it doesn't lock nope okay well then i will open it to see if there's anything inside uh church vestments lots of white red and gold um, again, very high church, very Anglican, not at all sort of low church and Puritan. In, co in keeping with the Laudian um, altar table and all the rest of it. In other words. Hello? Oh. I'm muted. Sorry, I didn't realize. I thought I'd unmuted myself. Is there a specific um, allegiance between the different churches, you know, like the more Puritan Protestant type or the uh, the Anglican kind of high church type, as far as the uh, the sides go in this kind of um, the civil war that's ongoing? Absolutely. Um, in fact, Archbishop Lord was executed by Parliament last year. Okay, right. 
Uh, and the region that we are in, however, is held by the parliamentarians? It is, and it is... It's not as kind of hardcore Puritan as somewhere like, you know, um, Suffolk or Essex or places like that, but it's pre predominantly leans towards Puritanism, low church, mm -hmm. against high Anglicanism. So this is so, an odd, odd thing. Now, these guys are up to no good as far as our personal allegiance faction goes. For sure. These guys uh, seem to be working or flirting with the enemy, etc. Um, okay. Well, that's all very interesting. I don't know. Well, yeah, I would want to be very careful as far as disposing of any of these um, alembics and such. Uh, I don't want to, like, burn myself or set the place on fire. Well, maybe I do. Very tempting. Um not burn myself, but set the place on fire. That is very tempting. But that was that was a thought to purify it. Yeah, I suppose I'm just yeah, I'm very um angered and offended by by all of this stuff. So I'll go over to the bench that has all the stuff kind of piled up on it and just kind of overturn it mm -hmm. and shatter a lot of the uh yep. the pieces. Yep, it's yeah, uh, it's uh, you sort of stand over it with righteous indignation. Um, swinging at it with your with your sword to break it mm. up, um, it's easy to do. Um, so the sound of kind of shattering glass and splintering uh, echoes throughout the whole building as you uh, go about your godly business. Um, so you've also got um, uh, this sort of this this wooden box in the middle of the floor, and the bookcases and scattered books. Yeah, that's true. I momentarily forgot about them in my uh, my rage. <laughs> Once I'm done smashing these um, alchemical uh, t devices, then I will. Um, I guess I'll go to the wooden box first. Mm -hmm. um, as you approach it, it becomes clear that this is the source of this peculiar ammonia-like smell in the room. It's, the, it's about it's it's less than half a yard in all dimensions. It appears from the fact that one side of it is laying off to one side that somebody has violently broken it open. Mm -hmm. um, it's also got a series of sort of half inch in diameter holes drilled throughout it. Um, you can make me either a, a cult culture or intelligence check, intelligence times two check. Um, what's my culture? Culture, it's the same either way. So I made it uh, zero one. Okay. Wow. Uh, it reminds you most strongly um, of boxes that are used to carry homing pigeons around in. Mm, or a robin. Mm. Interesting. Um, but it's, it's the open side is obviously laying towards the floor. By the looks of it, because all you can see is these 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 sort of um, the wooden sides with the piercings. Right. Interesting. Okay, and then I will start to to look over the books, which would probably take me some time. Um, it's. I mean, there are only about half a dozen here, but um, it looks. <laughs> It, it would be a strange thing to have a bookcase this big to hold this sort of dozen or so books. Right. Um, the ones that you sort of pick up at random, um, the Book of Common Prayer, the Constitutions and Canons Ecclesiastical of 1640, um, the collections of sermons of the most reverend father in God, William Lord, sometime Lord Archbishop of Canterbury. Ah. This is all, yeah, it's all very be very high church, very Ang very high Anglican lord, uh -huh. etc. Um, on each of the and it looks to me like there's probably books that were taken as well. Yes, looks like there's books missing. Yes, um, on the flyleaf of each of these books uh, is handwritten in the same hand. This book, the property of John Molden, B.D., sometime of New College, Oxford. John Molden, B.D. Mm -hmm. BD stands for Bachelor of Divinity. Mm. Uh, 
Well, Greg, Gregory, I'm he's not. Good. Yeah, he's good with Greg either way. I'm not sure that uh, that whoever has has done this wasn't um, <laughs> wasn't doing the right thing. Look at this. I'll show him the vestments. I'll show him the the books. Oh, they were trying to purge it. They were trying to purify the church. Is that is that what you're seeing? Well, my question is, who was doing the alchemy here? Is I've already smashed up all the stuff, so that's not, <laughs> that's not doing me any favors. But um, I mean, did it seem evident that the stuff has been here? And it hadn't just been set up hastily and uh, like just, just I guess maybe I don't know if that would be an insight or if it would just be maybe um, some kind of a uh, you've got just trying to divine in my own head if I believe that these um, because especially given all the high church stuff I am kind of leaning towards the fact that the, the the church had something to do with the alchemy not that like a bunch of alchemists broke into the place killed these guys and set up and started doing their alchemy inside here right. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, it you wouldn't you probably don't know what a sort of uh, an alchemical laboratory would look like if it was set up properly as opposed to if it was just set up. No, no, I probably don't. Yeah. Um, I mean that said, um, it was very clearly deliberately set up i mean it had a whole series of you know you remember smashing up quite clearly connection from jar a to jar b which connected to jar c and then this was put over this little iron brazier which was obviously meant to heat something up i mean it was clearly unless somebody was in incredibly randomly threw the bits together no it looks like it was meant to be a functioning alchemical laboratory of some complexity well i think the only way we're going to get any further answers about what was going on here, Gregory, is if we track down these uh, perpetrators and uh, see where they're going, who they are, what they have taken, because it's quite obvious to me they've taken some of the books, but they've left these behind. I'd be curious to see what books they took with them. Perhaps some alchemical treaties, treatises, treatises, whatever. <laughs> My character has better English than I do, apparently. Of course. Um, in the meantime, should we purify this church or leave it as is? What would be the nearest, um, what would it be, const constable? Would there be a uh, any kind uh, of a, I don't know, it would be constables at that time period or whatever, sheriff? Uh, in, in, in these days. Magistrate, maybe? Magistrate, yeah. There'll, 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 be a, there'll be a justice of the peace. Justice uh, of the peace, thank you. Uh, but he he will be in the town that you set off from a couple of days ago, which is called Castephen. Yeah, I think this is up to us. We either leave it as is or burn it down. Uh, I'm all, I'm fine with. It. Let's try set it on fire. Now, if we do set it on fire, it's going to be seen from around the countryside. Is that what we want? We want them to know that we're on it. Uh, it might blow our cover. Also, also, I mean, ir irrespective of where you stand on the religious divide in terms of Catholic, high protestant high It's Anglican, probably not good to but, burn yeah, a church. Burning, burning down a sanctified space is a little outré. It's probably a crime as well. Uh, no, you're right. We should not burn it. We'll leave it. Um, maybe, um, maybe we just set a small fire outside. Not a, not a fire that will burn the church, but almost like a, a small beacon fire that hopefully will be seen by somebody from the town so that perhaps the, uh, the, the Justice of the Peace will come out and discover the scene himself while we pursue. Right. No, I agree. Do, do we, should, we, uh, should we give these two proper burial? <sighs> we don't have time for that. Uh, what what is it they say in the church? Uh, God God knows his own. Yeah, we can't leave them to rot in the church, though. That's you know, you wouldn't leave a dead rat in the in the rice barrel. Why don't we uh, take them out and give them a at least a pagan burial? We we'll, could burn them. Uh, cremation is actually illegal at this point. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, we'll forget we saw it and move on. 
Yeah, we, we just set the little uh, beacon fire outside on the east side of the church. So mm -hmm. we came from the east, right? Uh, you came from sort of, yeah, the, south, the southeast, yes. Yeah, on that side of the church, then we'll try to set up like a, some kind of a a little uh, a little pyre fire, something to, to put some smoke in the air, maybe draw some attention from locals who might say, oh, there's, there's a bunch of smoke coming from over in the direction of the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, and um, I will go then and look at further at the tracks. I imagine you told me about the other tracks you found. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll see if I can try to dis discern um, which direction they headed off. Um, yeah, probably isn't too hard to figure out, but just in case. You want me to make a roll? Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a 36. What's my skill? Track, 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 track. 56. Success. Okay. Good, solid success. Okay. You've got two different sets of tracks. One wearing common garden latchet shoes, similar to what the priest is wearing, was wearing. They only come in. Muddled with them and partially over the top of them, implying a later arrival, another set of sort of common or garden, almost clog-like shoes, very poor man's shoes. Coming in, going out, heading north towards the village of Crowland, which is about half, three quarters of a mile north of here. Okay. Interesting. On foot? Yes. No other signs of the horse tracks? They're just out by the gate only, yeah? Um, well, um, they, they, you also saw them sort of in the churchyard. Itself. Right, right, right. They were just a confusion of horse tracks. Well, <clears throat> these tracks definitely come in and go out, and they head this way, Gregory, towards Crowland. So I think uh, that's the direction we should head as well. Absolutely. If we if we just get our horses, the area, yeah, let's let's start hauling ass. Get our horses and start heading towards uh towards Crowland. Okay. So you go back, retrieve the horses, circumnavigate. You can either lead them through the churchyard or circumnavigate. It doesn't really matter. Um, but you come back onto um, a uh, back to the sort of the footprints leading off to the north, um, and they lead across. The, they lead across the field um, and uh, sort of round. And there's a sort of hedgerow, sort of obscuring your vision. But there's a clearly defined gap in this hedgerow which these footprints take you suspect underneath the snow there's probably a path here but it's just lost to you because you don't know that it's there but somebody obviously does right okay well then Beyond i guess we will go ahead we'll continue to pursue the uh, the tracks then mm -hmm. um we guess we we have to be kind of careful right because we don't want our horses uh to slip, break a leg, whatever, etc. Absolutely, yeah. Whatever the safest speed is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the snow is 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 um, it's deep enough to obscure a path, but it's not deep enough to hide the ditches at either side that form the field boundaries that you're kind of following. So there's no, you can see where the ditches are. There's no immediate danger of tumbling into one of those. Good. Well, we'll still proceed at a relatively safe speed. Just, just, you know. No sense in uh, endangering the horses because if we lose the horses, then uh, then we're on foot. So, okay. Um, so you pass through this uh, this sort of quite tall hedgerow with this gap in it, where the footprints do, and uh, the the sort of the ground sort of slopes ever so gently away from you, um, off to the north and off to the um, northwest. You are looking out over the little village of well, Hamlet really now of Crowland. A traditional English sort of East Midlands village, a triangular green in the centre, surrounded by a series of timber framed houses. You can see from here lines of sort of blue grey smoke. The day is absolutely windless, very bright sunshine. And you can see the lines of blue grey wood smoke drifting up from the chimney in all the houses that you can see. Off to the northeast, you can see the remnants of what you, Gregory, would certainly know would be Crowland Abbey, um, uh, an old Cistercian house long since fallen into ruin. All right. Well, any any pertinent information they would have, he wouldn't keep it to himself. He'd share it with his partner <laughs> as they approach. Mm -hmm. These tracks seem to head straight to the village or do they go around it? 
Uh, no, they seem to be heading directly. They they sort of loop around and come into the village via the eastern side of the the, uh, the green. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we'll probably lose them once we get into the um, into the hamlet itself. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I guess then we should also approach from that direction. I want to see what our quarry saw. Okay. Basically, as we approach. Okay. Um, so you sort of uh, you're you're able to bring the horses up to a little canter. Um, once you get out into a, a, a sort of long, barren stretch of snowy ground out on the eastern side of the village, um, which gradually gets sort of colonised, as it were, by what, what seem to be fenced off gardens and allotments and animal pens. Um, you can see sort of at the southern end as you approach, you can see sort of little groups of um, uh, half a dozen sheep, two or three pigs, um, sort of uh, trying to survive in the cold. Um, the footprints you're following, the foot tracks you're following, loop around and, as I say, come straight in to the sort of the middle of the village, but on the eastern edge. And there you've got another um, one of these little allotments, a sort of little picket fence mark demarcating it. Um, the various sort of vegetables and crops, snow covered and obscure. Except, and the, the whole area is kind of this white blanket, except for one of these allotments on the east side of the village. You can see two little dark smudges um, from a distance. And as you get closer and closer, you realise one of them is what appears to be the body of a woman. And about five yards away from her, the body of a little dog body as in dead the dog lays on its back its paws stretched rigid up in all four paws stretched rigid up into the sky it's um its head cocked to one side eyes open tongue lolling in the snow what have we stumbled into gregory Indeed. by the way i would have spoken to gregory on the ride to here um, I would have, I apologize for not saying this, John, but I would have um, shared my thoughts with you that uh, since there were two sets of tracks going into the uh, the church and then only one set coming out, I think perhaps the man we found in the back room with all the alchemical equipment perhaps was uh, an accomplice of whoever had, uh, whoever had left. Wasn't the one that was in the back, uh, the young man with the lime? Yeah. Yes, he was part. He was part. He seemed to be more of an iconoclast, right? He was also wearing riding boots, right? Yeah. So obviously, gotcha. yeah, right. So perhaps you've already come to the same conclusion, but I just would have shared that with you anyway, nonetheless. Roger, Roger. Okay. But we only found one set of tracks. So we've only seen one body. Well, two bodies: a dog and a woman in this yeah. hamlet. Um, you can see. Um, you can just tell immediately from the fact that she's wearing a sort of proper little modesty cap. Um, and a sort of uh, voluminous um, woolen dress and an apron, um, but she's laying face down on the snow. Mm -hmm. um, she's, she too has got a little sort of tin pail or bucket sat next to her. Really? Mm -hmm. Lime wash again? Uh, you, from where you are, you can't quite see. You'd have to basically dismount and sort of scramble over this little picket. Yeah, I, I will, I'm dismounting and scrambling. Mm-hmm. Uh, Check no. to make sure she's dead, but I presume she is. She's, yeah, the, the bucket pathetically contains a little shovel and three or four shriveled little parsnips. She was obviously in the act of digging up. Okay. And she's dead. She's and quite... the nearest domicile is? Um, the sort of... Um, the, the, the nearest okay. house is about sort of maybe 40 or 50 yards away off to the west of you. Oh, really? In between there and you, there's a whole bunch of barns and sheds and outbuildings and byres and gardens. Right. Well, um, let's go quickly, Gregory, and see if there's anybody left alive in this place. Absolutely. Um, I guess the first thing, though, oh, well, wait a minute. Perhaps she's fresh, really freshly dead, and those people back at the church, they hadn't been dead long. Uh-oh. So perhaps we're close. He oh. may be. In, he, he may be in one of these buildings. Perhaps right. it would be folly to just ride quick too quickly into the village. 
Well, uh, what do you when think? The, when the when the track show? Ah, true. Maybe can look around. Oh, I'll have a look around, see if I can find any tracks um, aside from my own yep. and from hers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gregory also has tracking, but not that high. Is there any way to? I got a, perhaps, I got a thirty-one. Okay, he's got a twenty-eight. Is there any way to maybe no, give I, I, a little I bit? Have, bit? I have fifty-six in the skill, but I rolled a thirty-one. Oh, I got you. Very good. I think it's fifty-six. Was it? Yeah, fifty-six in track. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, you can see what you take to be the woman's footprint coming out to where she fell. Mm -hmm. You can see the dog's footprints. They seem to trace a sort of strange place. Sure. On her, but there's something else here. You can't quite pick it. it they're, they're light, they don't make very deep impressions in the snow, um, and they seem to be accompanied by a strange sort of almost like a, like a brush or something has been sort of pushed along next to these tracks. It's very strange. Um, the, 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 the sort of crystalline icy top level of the snow has been sort of brushed away in places. And this always accompanies what appears to be a four footed creature, quite small. Um, it, it, it looks for all the world like, um, uh, the footprint of a bird, cockerel maybe. But four Perhaps foot. I mean, yeah, I miss. Did I mishear you? Did you say there was a four foot creature? Four footed. Oh, four footed. Whew. Okay. Fair enough. A four footed creature that might be a bird type. A four footed bird. Yeah, possibly. That's the nearest thing. It doesn't quite sit with any bird that you've sort of, you know, a domesticated bird that you've ever seen, but that's the nearest sort of cognate that you can reach. Mechanically for. speaking, in the game setting, or not mechanically speaking, setting speaking. Hmm. Are we used to enchanted creatures as well as uh, wizards and so forth like that? They are certainly unnatural um, or uh, exotic creatures. Yes, they Wonderful. certainly exist, but they 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 mostly exist in the Indies, Cyrenica, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are rumored to be some in England, but can I determine which direction they go? Um, they appear, you, you can't, you, you, you've, you realize that you must have accidentally walked over some of them as, as you approached her body. I mean, you weren't looking for them. You had no idea. No, I wasn't. No, I ran, ran right up to her. Um, uh, but they appear to basically travel sort of in a northwesterly direction towards the village, maybe the northern end of the village. And there's other buildings between here and there, like barns and stuff. Yep. Well, we should quickly check each of these buildings along the way to the village. What do you think, Gregory? Agreed. We don't have to search deeply within each one, but just to make sure they're not occupied before we move on to the next. Maybe maybe I misheard, but did it say that there was smoke coming out of each chimney? Yep. Yeah. All, the houses, all the houses appear to have fires burning in them. It would seem to make sense being winter and all. Right. So if there's a fire burning, then they're occupied. Well, or were occupied. Fair enough. Fair enough. At least this morning. Then let's do it. Pick the first one and go for it. All right. You, you want to go, you officially want to bang on the door and force your way in politically, or are we going to well, go? Well, we'll see. Like first, first we're going to be coming across like these barns and outbuildings, right? So those would probably just be a matter of opening a door and peering in. Um, you know, I don't think, given the suspicious circumstances, I'm going to be announcing my my presence. Saying, Hello, anybody in here? You know that kind of way, right? Um, I'll be kind of. Opening, creaking doors open, peering in, sniffing the air, looking for any signs of any kind of animals moving into them or, or uh, even footprints coming and going. Um, yeah. Okay. I saw your, your thing, John. Did you want to take a quick bio break? Yes, please. If I could. Yep. No problem. Yep. Five, Be right back. Yep. Five, right back. Time for me to smoke this anyway. Exactly.
is all very eerie. <laughs> so, yeah, it's um it's a, yeah, it's it's uh it, it's yeah, it's got it as you'll see it, it it contains kind of you know sort of three kind of classic elements of uh investigation interaction and and uh, and violent interaction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't wait for that. <laughs> Back, sorry. Uh, no, we're right. Good to go. Oh, actually, before we do any further. Okay. So, uh, yes, you have a series of these sort of little wooden barns and um, uh, animals. Sheds and such. Yeah, some of which are made of sort of dry stone and most of them are made, seem to be made out of timber. A few are made of dry stone, little low dry stone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you can hear sort of and see the steam of kind of animal breath rising from some of them and hear sort of pigs rooting around in the occasional bar of sheep. Um, so there are some living animals still around? Yes. Hmm. It just seems to kill people and small animals. Like birds and dogs, mm. little dogs. Um, so, yes, I mean, you can see that there are kind of um, uh, natural sort of alleyways and pathways which form sort of and head towards the centre of the village and the village green. Um, at the moment, you're, as I say, standing sort of near the body of this woman. Um, you can sort of follow her allotment to the fence line and then there's a sort of pathway which runs north to south along a whole series of these gardens and walls or you can head directly west and it will take you pretty much straight to the village green. And the... But the, but the, strange, tra the strange trail appears to cut diagonally across this allotment um, heading to yeah. off to the northwest somewhere. I will go that way. Okay. Um, what you realise is you, as you sort of clamber over the fence, you're still able to follow these tracks across the allotment. But as soon as you get onto the other side of the allotment fence, you're on what obviously has been um, a, a path which has been used quite a lot, even during this morning. There are lots of sort of um, trails of people and animals moving along it. So you lose the trail of the, uh, the little critter itself. Mm -hmm. But you've got, of course. Um, you've got um, sort of more, more or less immediately to the west of you. You've got a, a low, dry stone wall containing what appear to be four pigs, and then slightly to the north of that, a large wooden shed, small barn type thing. Do we see any more people about, or any bodies, or anything around? No. No people at all. Very strange. Let's go check out that uh, that barn there, north just north of that uh, pig pen. Okay. We say Gregory. Sure. Agreed. Sorry, I had my mute on. I didn't realize it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I said it like five times. Agreed. 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 <laughs> say it louder, and maybe the, the microphone will unmute itself. Right. Uh, okay, so you uh, you sort of uh, push open a low wooden gate, which gives access to this little yard in which this wooden barn sits. Um, you can see it's got a, um, a sort of quite a large double doors, and then inset inset in that is a smaller wicket door. Gun Any first. We're gonna go yeah. to the street sweeper. Go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead. Yep. <clears throat> Lead him with again. Gun. All senses are on alert. Just mm -hmm. 
I'm very paranoid. Okay. Uh, okay. So you, uh, you you can do you can either push you can either pull open the um, the sort of smaller door or you can pull the whole sort of barn door type thing open. They're only it's only just secured with like a wooden drop down latch thing. Uh, whatever the most convenient aspect would be. Uh, make sure no, never mind. I mean, tactically, you're probably better off maybe opening a smaller space than a large sort of bigger door, perhaps. But other than that, there's no real... Works for me. Okay. So you pull open the little wicket gate. Uh, it's, there's there's no, uh, no windows inside here. Um, and uh, you sort of, the first thing you kind of realize is this sort of warm smell of... Um, silage and uh, sheep, which you're possibly more or less familiar with. Um, but what are you saying? <laughs> hey, you know, you're a rural, you're a rural gentleman. You know. um, gotcha. Um, but the thing that strikes you about it is that it's like you know, whenever you went into your father's sheep pens and all the rest of it, or even just went into one to hide from the law. Um, the first thing that strikes you whenever you walk into these sort of buildings is the warmth. You've got a collection of animals together and the building naturally kind of acquires a sort of, you know, body temperature warmth. As soon as you open this door, the first thing you notice is the cold air. Oh. Not good. What's the matter? This is not how a proper barn should be. Too cold. Smells right to me. Cold. Hmm. Oh, you're right. It is cold. As your kind of eyes adjust to the dim light, you can see maybe half a dozen sheep laying collapse on their sides on the earthen floor. Are they collapsed in a, like, hey, we're just laying here on our side kind of way, or are they kind of exploded or otherwise gory and such? Like every other corpse you have seen, human and animal, other than the slightly bloodied priest and the skinned knuckles of the man in the vestry, not a mark on them. Mm. Interesting. Go up to one of them, and um, that's dark, isn't it? Um, with the wicket door open, it's light enough to see by dimly. Uh huh. Have a I'm sure. I have like a, a candle or a torch or something in in my pack. Sure. Light, light a torch. Mm hmm. And um, examine the uh, the necks of these animals, looking for any kind of uh, puncture wounds or anything to see if they've been exsanguinated. Okay. Um. Uh. I imagine that was part of the folklore at the time. Yeah, you can, uh, you can. Well, give me a straight up perception, I guess, for something like that. Sure. Uh, oh God, no! I rolled a ninety-two. I have a good perception too. Oh well. Yep. They're dead, Jim. I mean, Gregory. <laughs> yeah, quite dead. It's like a, a sweeping, a sweeping death, just taking its toll from everything that's living. Yep. Yeah, it's like something has just sucked the life right out of them. And, um, also, you can uh, um, give me a um, an insight check, actually, or, or or any kind of animal law, hus animal husbandry, anything like that that you might have. I have in insight. Okay. Wow, and I rolled a ninety-four. So no. I rolled Fuck a 30, 37, and my insight is a 34. So, no, I missed it. Okay. All right. Yep. I wish I could have loaned you my insight. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, there I is, guess we're going to carry on to the next. For future reference, I think there is a rule for assistance. I think you can assist. Yeah, that's what I was asking earlier about the tracking. Yeah, it didn't come. It wasn't necessary then, was it? But I should have looked at it then, perhaps. But it's um, if I remember rightly, I think you loan somebody a proportion of your of your uh, persistent. 
I would I would think something simple like maybe at, if you help them, you give them an extra ten percent or something. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. You 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 add ten percent. Um, well, you add what's called your critical rating, which is ten percent of your skill rating. So if you've got a thirty, it would be you add three points. Doesn't seem very. I got you. Okay. Yeah, it's not very a huge good. system, but. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't going to help you, I don't think. Well, right. ten percent of my thing would have been six points. I guess it would have helped, but uh, either way, there's anyway, nothing we can do for these dead sheep. So let's no, move on. Let's, not, let's, let's move on. And there's no signs of any animals living in here. Nothing moving. So, but I think whatever it is we're pursuing, it has been here. But I wonder now, are we still pursuing a man or an animal or both? A man and an animal or perhaps a manimal? Perhaps someone that's shifting between or riding upon? Mm. I don't know about riding upon given the lightness of those impressions. Mm. Maybe it's a familiar. Mm. Or a shapeshifter, as you said. Mm. Foul alchemy. Uh, that would be witchcraft, but yes, I know what you mean. Who knows what those perfidious alchemists can get up to, though. Indeed. Okay, well, let's carry on towards the village more, right? Because we were moving in closer to the village the way we were going? Yeah, Absolutely. it's sort of diagonally approaching, really, rather yep. than... Yeah, yeah, not directly approaching it, but yeah, let's continue along and looking for more signs. If we come across any buildings with um, smoke coming out of their chimneys, I, I think I would probably go up and knock on the door. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah. I want to see if there's anybody alive in this village. Yep. I mean, the, 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 if you basically, from where you are, you can either sort of keep going vaguely north, which will take you further along this line of um, sheds and outbuildings and gardens, or you can turn slightly west and within sort of t 10 yards or so, there's the garden attached to a small cottage on the sort of... Uh, That's good. Let's go to that cottage. If not, as we come back out and go back around, but... And this is a parliament village, correct? Uh, as far, We're well, parliamentary territory, yeah. Yes, yes. It's, it, but it is on the border um, of the royalists. The royalist lines are a few, a, um, a, a few <laughs> miles north of here. But yes, as far as you know, Crowland is loyal. Very good. All right, yeah, I'll go up and start knocking on the door. Okay. Um, it's a sort of a little, um, obviously, a sort of uh, the further away from the village green you are, the poorer you get. It's little more than a sort of long, low, single-story house with thatch um, uh, and a sort of slightly ill-fitting wooden door which rattles when you bang on it. Um, mm. uh, nobody answers. Uh, you can make me a perception check. Perception check. 30, 39, sorry, 39 under 67. Th there's, inside, you can faintly hear the sound of what sounds like a, a small wooden piece of furniture being moved and then hastily stopping and then silence. Please, please open up. We are uh, commissioners, parliamentary commissioners. We need your assistance. Again, door rattles in the uh, in the jam. Um, uh, Gregory, as you're sort of standing a few yards behind him, I presume, ready for anything, um, you notice that the windows are um, normally they'd be covered just with kind of canvas or sacking or something like that, but they appear these windows appear to have been closed off with wooden. Um, Furniture, it looks like, has been piled up against them. Interesting. <clears throat> Take a quick look. Are there any other huts around the immediate area? Uh, sort of um, human-occupied um, cottages. Yeah, yeah, they basically run sort of north and south of your position, um, a series of small laborers' cottages, yeah. Can we, uh, close enough that we can see their windows? Yes, are they also covered the same way? Uh, not exactly the same way. Some of them seem to have um, shoved uh, what appear to be sort of um, 
uh, blankets or bolsters or pillows. It, the, every, every, looking around up and glancing up and down this row of cottages, you can see now every single one, the windows have been blocked by some ad hoc means. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, meanwhile, Gabriel banging on the door. Um, again, you hear a sort of, a, a, what appears to be a very muffled, urgent, whispered conversation beyond, you can't hear what's being said, but it's clearly, clearly a conversation between two people on the, on the other side of the door. All right, now I'm getting angry. Is the, I presume the door is locked. Uh, it's it's got a sort of very primitive wooden catch like mechanism, but mm -hmm. to them it's probably got a sort of uh, a method for stopping up the catch or the latch on the mm -hmm. top, so you can't lift it. Yes. All right. I um, in my uh, my anger at being so rudely ignored and uh, met only with whispers. I am going to take a couple steps back and then throw myself against the door to try to see if I can shoulder it open. Okay, go ahead. Give me... Uh... Forgetting that I'm just a weak little man, but, you know. <laughs> uh, okay, give me uh, strength times... Ooh, it's quite a weak door, isn't it? Strength times three, check. <sighs> no, I rolled a 28, and my strength times three is 21. Okay. <laughs> Sort of curl yourself at this door, which proves to be stouter than it feels at first, and you kind of thump against it, and it, but the latch holds. Um, but you do make a, 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 an almighty crash, which echoes up and down the silent streets. Um, Gregory, he'll come away. in. He'll come in there with the big, the big go boot. Away. Don't you know the devil stalks these lands, sirs? Go away, flee. Break this door down. If they won't open it, I'll say loudly. On the count of three, I'm breaking the door down. One, two. Oh, masters, masters, please leave us in peace. Get off the streets. If it finds you, we'll surely slay you. Show yourselves. Three. And if they don't open it, he'll kick the door in. Go ahead. Strength time. A 17, and his strength is much less than that. Stand by. <clears throat> yeah, you're going strength times three, right? So, yeah, uh, so yes, you, you passed that, yes? Oh, very much. You so. said earlier your strength was 14, right? So, yeah, it's 14. Would be 42. Yep. <laughs> okay, you, you uh, kick it once, sort of more accurately, sort of right at the point of the latch, um, and the door immediately swings open and then stops, about sort of having sort of swung open about six inches, it stops and bang, because it's hit somebody very, very hard standing on the other side of the door. You hear a, oh! Well, hopefully it wasn't a pregnant woman. We go in. Okay. I go in. Okay. Um, laying on the floor. I go in behind him. Mm -hmm. Laying on the floor immediately in front of the door is a, um, a man dressed in sort of simple rustic homespun wool and linen clothing and sort of tatty wooden clogs. Um, he's got a sort of deep cut above his eye. Um, which is the blood rapidly filling his eye socket and running down his cheek. Um, he's sort of laying curled up, trying to sort of protect himself. Behind him uh, is a, a woman in sort of typical woman's peasant garb. Um, she's sheltering what appears to be four children, sort of standing with her arms either outstretched on either side of her, holding back four terrified children, all of them probably under 10. I'll oh, sheath my sword. Yep, he'll put his uh, weapon behind him to the side, sling it back. What is woman, wrong with you people? Woman, see to his injury. We mean you no harm, and he'll close the door. Okay. She just sort of looks at you, recognizes you as quality gentleman, and reflexively obeys. Um, goes, goes up to the, the uh, man laying on the floor and uh, sort of uh, looks at him for a second, goes off to um, what appears to be a bowl standing on a, a wooden table in the middle of the room, um, sort of soaks part of her pinafore, and it comes back and starts sort of uh, dabbing his eye. <laughs> He, all he does is, during this whole time is lay, lay on the floor groaning. The four children are all staring at you with eyes the size of hen's eggs. You say the devil stalks these lands, that you seem content to lock us out and leave us with it? She, she, the woman looks up at you. It's Lord, save us, masters. We, we meant you no harm, but it's death to even glance upon it, they say. What is, what is this creature? Have you seen it? 
Lord, no, I shouldn't be just, I shouldn't be alive to stand here and say to you, had I seen it my, with my own eyes? No. Then how do you know it's there? Well, uh, the whole village knows, of course. Uh, uh, Enoch Howard. Why? The men, the men who came through. Parliament men like yourself, sir. Parliament men came through. And they told you about this creature? That they did, but didn't stop long to uh, didn't stop long to give us details, sir. They fled themselves. Where? Which direction did they come from? I, d I don't rightly know. Uh, they spoke to uh, Master Hallows, the, the, the shoemaker. The shoemaker, and where is his place? Oh, this is the big house on the on this side of the green, sir. You can't miss it. It's the only one with a big brick chimney. Hmm. I look at the uh, now broken uh, thing on the door. See how hard would it be, would it be to fix? Uh, you'd need a few stout nails, but that that would that would be all. Do you have any nails? Uh, 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 I, I don't know, Edmund. Edmund, my dear, do we have any nails about the place? The man sort of looks up. His eyes aren't quite focusing. Blood still sort of draining down. We need to fix your lock. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> Believe me, sir, I, I have every incentive to get right to it. Will you leave us in peace now, sirs? Of course. But <clears throat> the next time good uh, parliamentary men come looking for assistance in a land that is stalked with a devil, perhaps you will consider opening the door. That we will, sir. That we will. Sorry to have troubled you, ma'am. <laughs> I will just kind of nod my head and uh, come on, Gregory, let's go. Let's go visit the shoemaker. Very good. He'll, he'll chuck the, uh, the woman a coin on his way out. <clears throat> uh, she's too busy sort of dabbing the blood off her husband's face and one of the children rushes forward and grabs it. Um, and you just see him sort of him and three, his three siblings immediately rush towards him as well and what looks like the beginning of a scuffle starting over it as you sort of draw to anything I can do for family harmony <laughs> <laughs> what you should have done is just chuck three coins in there right oh jeez <laughs> true chaos there Gregory I, my my uh my mind is on that box we saw in the room at the back of the church. Remember, it looked like uh, something kind of like a like a bird cage, a small bird um, right cage. And this creature, legs like a bird, if maybe four instead of two, mm. light tracks seems to perhaps flutter about, fly, uh, landing gently. Very insightful. Perhaps someone did some kind of a terrible ritual at that church bringing forth this creature giving it life and now it stalks this village preying on the people but who are the parliamentary men you think she mentioned perhaps that's the source of the horses that we saw that would make sense but i doubt they were parliament they're most likely uh if they if they were parliament they might have been iconists but i don't know why would they send two groups to the same area Hmm. Well, the, surely the shoemaker should have some answers for us. Let's hope he'll be a little bit more um, accommodating. Agreed. To the perhaps, shoemaker. perhaps we'll try a more diplomatic uh, approach now that we know there are people living here. True. Makes sense. Yeah. So let's go to uh, the big house, she said, on the side of the green, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you uh, come out and you, you can sort of make your way around the end of this cottage and do a sort of clearly defined alleyway would be the wrong word because that would imply build up, built up buildings on both sides. But by the presence of kind of various fences and sheds and things like that, you can see a straight path running towards the village green. Um, and in fact, you can sort of see the sort of uh, snow covered uh, green from where you are. And I've always 
uh, I know I keep saying it, but I've always got my my ears and eyes, nose, everything open wide, just listening for any sounds. Um, something in, in particular, I'd probably be listening out for any sounds of animal distress. <clears throat> this thing does seem to occasionally feed on animals as well as, as people. So, in fact, we found more dead animals than we found people. So, if I hear like a ruckus coming from a particular animal pen, my, my thought is that we will rush towards it to hopefully try to catch this creature in the act, perhaps. Not, don't know what the hell we're going to do with it then, but, you know. Okay. Just to give you an idea where my mind is at. Hey. Okay. So you uh, follow this pathway, come out onto a large expanse covered in snow. Um, you can see a great many sort of tracks crisscrossing the green um, and on the sort of three roads that form the uh, triangle around the outside of it. Um, and as the woman described, in fact, you can see on this, the eastern edge of the green, um, a large timber frame building um, with indeed um, what appears to be the only sort of stylish and relatively modern brick chimneys built onto the side of it. Smoke rises from them as from all the others that you can see around here. I go up and knock a little bit more politely on the door this time. There's a sort of shuffling from inside, and uh... who's there? Commissioner Thorpe and Commissioner Gregory. Commissioners for whom, sir? I'll say exactly Parliament. exactly who sent us, yeah. <laughs> whatever branch of Parliament it was, whatever, you know. I, you, uh, come in, for the love of the Lord, come in, come in, gentlemen, before the devil himself takes you away. And you, you hear the sound of a, a bolt, a metal bolt being drawn on the inside of the door, and it opens outwards about a foot or so to reveal a very pale, very thin, middle-aged man with intense blue eyes, um, sort of holding the door ajar with his long, thin fingers. Come in, come in. I'll go in first. Take my hat yeah. off my head as I step through the uh, doorway. Hmm? Follow up second and close the door. <clears throat> yep, he sort of hastily shuts the door and draws a, a large iron bolt across it um, as the two of you enter into uh, a long, narrow hallway. What did she say his name was? Simon, was it? The... Oh. Was it Simon? Was it? It was. Um, uh, gentlemen, my name is Enoch Hallows. I am. I have the honour of being um, something of a, a, a figure of authority in our little community. Enoch Hallows, you say? Hallows, yeah. Hallows. Sorry, sir. So, what uh, can you tell us about this creature that uh, preys upon your people and your animals? You've seen it, sirs. Surely. Only seen evidence of it. I have not seen it. We are hunting it. Well, I'm right glad I am of you that uh, godly men such as yourself should uh, should seek to aid us. But I, I fear that even two such stalwart gentlemen as you are as nothing against the power of this creature. Really? Let me see if I can. Uh, but come, come, let us not stand in the hallway. Come, come, come. And he opens a door on the left-hand side of the hallway, which leads into a sort of well-appointed um, brick-floored uh, parlour uh, with a series of uh, wooden tables and benches dotted around by a large fire lit. He proffers you by the fire. Mm. I'll have a seat. Indeed. He's going to stay by the fire. Cross my legs confidently and rest my uh, hat on the table. He calls through the door. Constance, Constance, my dear, uh, fetch some uh, warm wine for our guests. And you hear sort of answering, yes, my dear, coming from somewhere inside, further inside the house. And he sort of stalks up, stands right in front of the fire, turns around so his back is kind of facing the fire and puts his... His long, pale fingers together in a sort of steeple pattern under his chin. He looks down, closes his eyes. It all began this morning, just after dawn. Uh, of course, if you've been travelling locally, you'll know that well, the weather has been truly appalling. But this morning, with the clearing weather, people obviously are about on the roads once more. Just after dawn, 
godly man, calling himself Praise God Harrington, arrived with two young assistants. He claimed a commission from Parliament to cleanse the area of alchemists uh, and idolaters and papists. I don't, mm. I don't mind telling you now that I had no hesitation in suggesting that they pay a visit to the local church where that <sighs> deceitful, unpleasant papist of a man, the Reverend Malden, claims to serve the Lord. Mm. I remember the name on the book, mm -hmm. R.D. Malden. Mm -hmm. Him with his robes and incense and tables. Why, the man was all but a Catholic in my eyes. And that is not to speak of those strange lights that could be seen glittering from the vestry windows at ungodly hours. So, yes, yes, gentlemen, I, have, I am not ashamed to say that. I suggested that Praise God Harrington and his assistants should pay an early call upon the Reverend Morden. Well, they departed. I can, went about my went about my day. When some few hours later, what who should reappear but Mr. Harrington, one of his men, and one empty horse. They did not stop long. In fact, they fair galloped through the centre of the village, pausing only to say that we should flee or lock ourselves in our houses, for they were pursued by the devil itself. I see. Um, could my regional lord tell me if there is any known commissioner, praise God, Harrington, that might be working in the area? Sure, either of you or both of you can make that roll. Yeah, I'll try. Nope. God damn, 94. Rolling I've never heard of him. Stand by. And we're, we're basing this on local lore? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stand by. Okay, 46. My local lore is a 28. So no, I did not make it. Hmm. Sorry to say. Okay. What do you think, uh, Shard? Do you think? Uh, do you think these men were who they say they were? It sounds like a convincing tale. I think that uh, the man's on his own. I think he's um, uh, more of a, a vigilante. Why would why would uh, they charter us to come out here? And him at the same time in the same place. Well, weren't we traveling on to do something else when we stumbled across the church? Correct me if I'm wrong, Neil. But indeed, yeah, that was this was not our charge. Oh, that is true. I so, so I would, I would, I would uh, yeah, I was distracted by the day's events. I lost that's track. Okay. It's okay. Perhaps this old wine will help uh, help us both to uh, recollect our senses a bit. Indeed. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Constance. Yes, she, she rolls in. She's a kind of florid, round Christmas pudding of a woman squeezed into expensive grey kersey wool um, and uh, with a sort of white, modest white cap. With just a hint of sort of uh, trim, lace trim, not much as to be indecorous. And she kind of beams at you as she waddles in with this uh, silver salver um, on which I'll place three expensive crystal glasses. Have a, have a taste. I lost everything after uh, Christmas pudding. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have a taste of the, uh, the mulled <laughs> wine. Uh, yeah, it's very, it's very good. Oh, this is, uh, this is quite excellent. Uh, you should be very guarded with such a nice, uh, such a, such a grand mulled wine recipe. One might accuse you of alchemy. Oh, sir, she glanced. <laughs> then she sort of laughs, and then there's a tiny look in her eyes, and she looks at her husband as if to kind of say, is that a joke? <laughs> and I, I just kind of smile at her and continue to drink the wine. Uh, 
I'm not sure the smile is overly comforting. <laughs> she kind of. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well. Dab, dab, dabs her sort of brow with a handkerchief and sort of puts the tray down on the table and says, let me know if there's anything else you want, Enoch. And she disappears out of the door. <laughs> I don't see any reason. I, I don't see uh, any reason to believe that these men were not who they claimed to be. Oh, but, no, no. Praise God, Harrison is uh, well known about these parts as a is he? proper parliament man. Yes, yes. And oh, if he was still in the area, where when we find him? Is he staying in a particular place? Oh, he, as I say, when he left, he left in rather hurry. He didn't vouchsafe to us where he was headed. Him and his, mm. his man rode out north of here uh, in a great hurry. But um, <laughs> e even even uh, even did I not know him to be an honest man, what I saw a few uh, a few moments later would have given me cause to give his story. Well, you said that they were on horse, correct? Indeed. Did anyone come through town on foot? Not that I saw, no. But um, I, I, being a man, as I say, of, of some small credence hereabouts in the town, uh, given that uh, Harrison's reputation, I decided it was best to uh, uh, forewarn the local villagers who perhaps hadn't heard the men the warning. Uh, so I went out to the properties behind my house here and uh, uh, went out towards uh, Mistress Mayhew, Goody Mayhew's plot, her allotment uh, off to the east. Um, and uh, as I, I, I saw the thing itself. Ah. It, it, what did you see? The devil, the devil himself, I tell you. Small in the like the form of a, a, a bird or a, a bat, wings, but with a tail as of a serpent of the Indies. Uh, it ran about on four feet, legs like a cockerel, and black feathers. But the worst of it was that Mistress, Mistress Mayhew was out in her allotment digging up some vegetables, and she was out there with Pepper, her little dog, and and. And as I stood and watched, I, I, I was going to call out to her. I really was. I was going to call out to her. But something stayed me, made, made me silent. And the thing, flopping in that terrible way, as if it were trying to fly but couldn't quite, approaching across the snow, Mistress Mayhew looked up, glanced at it for but a moment, and fell upon the earth. Killed with a glance, you say? Ugh. Then, 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 then Pepper, always a good little dog, very loyal to Mistress Mayhew, he was, that boy. Uh, Pepper came running at the thing, obviously meaning to take it as a, as a, as a rat or a hare. Uh, and the poor creature met the same fate. One glance. Hmm. Indeed. And How does one combat was, such a creature? There was no call. <clears throat> there was no sound from this creature. I heard none other than the sound of its wings flapping against the snow. A terrible sound, unnatural. Hmm. I don't have the the correct lore to even roll for it, even though I know what it is. Damn it. <laughs> um, I don't think that would fall under my lore either. Witchcraft? No, this this kind of creature. I presume this is something a little bit beyond just general witchcraft. Now, you would have local <clears throat> folk, talk, folk tales, folklore. Sorry, talking yeah. about. This is, this is the one that uh, the, the classic stone heart, the heart attack was blamed on. Cockatrice. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I got no way to know this, so I, I can't. Even if it was just local talk, any any number of monsters could be. Well, I mean, I have heard um, tales, you know, the ancient uh, mythology of, of the Greeks of creatures that could kill with a glance. Well, they would they would Deuce. turn their prey to stone. Yes, um, this seems like potentially something similar, except maybe without the uh, petrification, as it were. And. Uh... Was it, was it Perseus? He used the mirror of his shield. 
Oh. I don't know the names, but yeah, I've heard the story. I, I... It was... I don't have a mirror. Do you have a mirror? <laughs> no. I did not. No, uh, that's that's a that's a luxury commodity. I have plenty of cloth, though, and we could easily fancy ourselves some blindfolds. True. Mm -mm -mm. Um, you, you speak of, of creatures of myth and legend. You you don't think this is a demon? Or perhaps the ancient stories spoke of demons, but under other names. Exactly. I uh, would not presume to try and proclaim what this creature is or is not. Really, it matters not if it is a demon or not a demon. It is unnatural, and it is a threat to all the good people of our land. So it must be destroyed. <coughs> Maybe there's a way for science to combat it. Maybe like through leaded glass, if we were to view it through leaded glass. Hey, maybe we could look look at it through stained glass. It has lead in it. Oh, gentlemen, you, 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 your philosophical speculations are uh, very much above my head, I, I'm afraid. But um, perhaps you... Uh, um, and he's quite clearly torn. He's sort of on the verge of saying something, but he doesn't... He, he's not going to volunteer it. Spit it out, man. Spit it yeah, out. Yeah, I'll just kind of lean towards him and put a hand on his shoulder and say, please, uh, Mr. Hallows, if there's anything else you can tell us that might help us. Okay, give me okay. some kind of roll, influence. I, I will make an, an influence roll. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, 54 over 63. I have an 18 of a 40 on the nose, 40. Okay. So basically what happens is he's sort of standing in the standing in front of the fire with his sort of hands behind his back, sort of speculating. And he sort of hesitates and stops and sort of puts his chin down on his chest. And the two of you, as one, stand up, push your chairs back and walk on to stand either side of his shoulders and just sort of look down at this man. And he sort of looks, his head comes up and he looks from one to the other, each of you. Well, perhaps you might want to speak to old Elias? Where do we find Elias, man? Um, he, 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 he inherited his, his mother's house just across the green. Be more specific. Point it out. Um, he turns around and he points to you the fact that he's got all of his curtains closed. Uh, well, a moment, and he sort of he walks over to the curtains, and then he sort of stands to one side of them, and sort of pulls the curtain aside so that he can't see out of the window, but you can kind of glance through. He's there, the, 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 the slightly crooked house there, with the, with the two windows on the on the ground floor. Very good. And what is Elias to you? To me, nothing. I, I am an upstanding and decent individual, a paragon of this town. I have no truck with such figures. But he is said to be a Cambridge man, learned in obscure things. Very well, then. We'll be on our way. I'll, I'll be on my way, at least. Yes, thank you very much. You've been very helpful. And thank you for the wine. Uh, I will pass on your gratitude to Constance. <laughs> mm, Christmas pudding. He, uh, he sort of leads you, picks up your hats and sort of uh, coats from the hallway. And uh, you sort of yourselves against the cold once more. And he sort of stands by the door, unbolts it, opens it. And as soon as you're out, he shuts it behind him and bolts it again. And you feel very exposed in this wide open, blank canvas, white space. All the, all of the uh, windows of the houses looking down on the green, covered up with curtains, sheets, whatever. Yeah, I would um, <laughs> proceed to uh, tear off a couple strips of cloth, long strips from either my cloak or 
if I have any extra cloth in my in my saddlebags from there. Um, I kind of just tie them like around our foreheads, as it were. Mm -hmm. If we encounter this creature, um, I suggest you pull this over your eyes. Very well. Okay. God knows how we're going to combat it blindfolded, but, well, at least you won't die from looking at the thing. Okay. Perhaps it seems to be a rather small creature. Perhaps if we can negate its gaze, uh, perhaps it won't be so threatening after that. Yeah, they're, they're... I, I, I say wishfully. <laughs> yeah, it does sound quite terrifying. Now, when when we note alchemy, I mean, I, I know what the word means classically, mm -hmm. but uh, it, are they taking it into context that it's... Um, we already noted that they make grenades and so forth like that, but it, would this transfiguration be more of an alchemical thing or more of a... Um, you mean the creation of a beast? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, um, alchemists are, of course, rumored to be able to create homunculuses. Homunculus. Okay, very good. Okay, that's all. I was, I was just making sure we were talking the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Not, not, not just the classic lead to gold, but we're actually talking about transfiguration. It, yeah, so. it's much more broader. Yeah. Okay, very yeah, good. Yeah, uh, and, and obviously, of course, you, you must know that the alchemists and the, the sorcerers are, are, you know, all in league with one another. They're dark of course. All. Mm. Yeah, of course. combined. Yes. Okay, so you can see. Sort of, what is this man's name? Elias. We're supposed to go speak to now. Yes. Right. Yeah, you can see this crooked little cottage on the western side of the green, um, maybe sort of 60, 80 yards from where you are, across the snow, across very open ground. Do we go straight across, or should we walk around the long way? Uh, straight up to him. He's just an old man. It's not the man I was concerned about. Ah, good call. They look for tracks, or any obvious tracks, or any signs of the sudden dead around, be it birds or rabbits or whatever, hares. There's, there's, there's no bodies that you can see of any animal or human. Um, the tracks are tracks are everywhere. I mean, it looks to me, it looks to you like um, it's essentially um, the everyday village. How, how about this? I'm going to use, um, if, if it need be, I'm just going to stop for a second and listen if there's standard noises, mm -hmm. birds chirping, bugs clicking, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Oh, okay. Stand by. Perception? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got, I was going to look for my perception. Okay. 32, under 67. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> Rolling the dice. I got a 34, and my perception is a 34 on the nose. Okay. By the way, John, did you spend your 250 extra points? I sure did. We just haven't done any of the good stuff I've got. <laughs> that's fine. That's cool. Yeah. Just yeah, okay. When it uh, comes to shooting and stabbing, that's when he becomes more of an effective sort right. of guy. I, I, I had thought about asking that question earlier, but I remember him specifically saying that he spent his points. All right, okay, cool. Yeah, he's pretty uh, much, he's, pretty much an, he's, he's, a mundane, he's a mundane sort of a guy until it comes to shooty, stabby sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Good, good, because uh, I am not good at any of that stuff. So, um, In answer to your questions, um, it's very, very quiet. <laughs> Shit. But... Not, not preternaturally so. You can hear the occasional muffled sort of, you know, rattling, rattling of a pig. You can hear sheep bat and a couple of cows lowing. Here. Mm, there's an idea, my friend. Don't don't the miners take canaries down with them? Maybe we could use an animal or some sort to be around us to give us some sort of. Uh, access to their natural sensitivities. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good thought. But uh, what animal? Yeah, we need to come across an animal. A dog would be most preferential. 
a loyal a loyal cur of some sort. Let's see if this Elias has a dog. If he does, we will uh, confiscate it for the parliament. All right, well, I suggest we make haste across this courtyard then as much as we can. Okay, so let's make, let's make our way to the to the hut. Okay, uh, so you cross straight over, tramping through the knee deep snow of the green, um, coming to this sort of crooked little cottage. Um, smoke drifts out of the chimney stack, as with all the other properties that you can see. It's unkempt. Um, the windows are not glazed; they're sort of wooden shutters um, with a, 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 a latched wooden door, similar to all the others you've seen here. Lead the way, my friend. I follow you in all things with etiquette. Okay, yep, I will go up and knock, uh, you know, relatively gently at the door. Okay. Um, you can hear this sort of padding sound of footsteps on the far side of the door. Mr. Um, Elias? Uh, one moment, one moment, please. <laughs> I'll be right there. And he sort of, you can hear the sound of footsteps flapping on a wooden floorboards on the far side. And then a second later, the door opens. And standing before you is a rotund man, maybe in his early to mid 50s. He's got a substantial gray beard um, and a sort of quite full gray head of hair. Um, he's sort of very pale skinned and has got a quite a, um, an elaborate sagging pale paunch, which is very well, well detailed since he, he's, standing, he's standing in front of you, stark bollock naked. Gross. Hello. Uh, if you gentlemen. You could put on some trousers, you nasty old man. What? No, no, no. Gregory, mind your manners. Are we all? Why are you naked, sir? We are all, of course, the children of Adam and Eve. Did Adam and Eve need clothing? Uh, only once they were in a fallen condition, it is true. But who is to say that we are not now uh, given by Christ above that dispensation and we should return to a state of Adamic purity? We are not ashamed, are we? And he slaps his belly, which wobbles slightly. And you can see his, in the cold air, his shriveled up little pedenda sort of draws up a little bit and wobbles. I kind of, um, kind of squat down and scoop up a handful of snow and toss it on his belly. <laughs> he sort of, he sort of goes, jump, jumps back. <laughs> well, such sport, gentlemen, such sport. But um, uh, You see, that's why we're wearing clothes. Ah, but the Lord has vouchsafed us shelter and warmth and fire. Speaking of which, I do gather that it is rather um, uh, unadvised to be outside. Um, come in, come in, if you would like. He turns and waddles. Perhaps you want to use that blindfold now, Gregory. I, I will guide you if you do. <laughs> As he turns away, his, his, uh, his, his buttocks, like a sort of pair of rather old and saggy walnuts, wobble away <sighs> the corridor. You you have you have a uh, distinct vision of this. I mean, me thinks that may this falls back on your actual real life <laughs> memories. Get in there, Bashard. <laughs> I, I at that point I just kind of pull pull him into the house and close the door. Okay. Um, as soon as you get inside, you realize that this is um, a, a, a chaos. Um, you can see that piled up either side of, against either wall, are great stacks of books, piles. Oh, what kind of books? Um, glancing at them, I mean, very often they, they wouldn't have had anything written on the spines to indicate what they are. So as far as you can tell, they're just a whole series of bound, you know, printed, mostly printed, some manuscript, but printed books. Grab one, pick it up. Pick okay. It up. Yep. What is it about? Um, it is um, a translation into English of Polybius, Polysebius's Six Ages of the Earth, a sort of faux history um, where the Bible is said to be phase one and then Charlemagne is phase two and so on. Okay. I don't see anything of a particularly uh, blasphemous or sorceress or... Uh, 
uh, alchemical? Impossible to say. I mean, it's, it, you, you, as, you, as, you, as you sort of fought, walk your way down the corridor, you sort of turn... Yeah, there's too many books. Yeah, you sort of turn the flyleaf of another one. Um, and it's John of Higdon's Polychronicon or Tales of England. Okay. Hmm. So, um, so Mr. Elias, you you know of this thing that plagues your village? Um, he sort of stops. He's got to the end of the corridor, which now opens up into a sort of parlour at the end. Um, and he sort of turns around to you and sort of... Um, Oh, uh, yes, uh, the, the gentleman came through shouting most excitedly about it. Um, and of course, Master Hallows um, claimed to have seen this dreadful creature. Yes, yes, of course. It seemed prudent to uh, cover the windows and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It seems that it can kill with a gaze. Ah, yes, the famous basilisk of legend. Yes, I think I think um, doesn't surprise me altogether, given uh, uh, given what old Malden was up to and what he was collecting. What causes you to say this? He sort of blushes, sort of <laughs> all over, almost. Uh, um, well, um, gentlemen, uh, I I I trust that you're not um, you're not interested in petty matters. We are interested in neutralizing this threat to our countrymen. And so well-meaning but possibly larcenous activity is not something that you would necessarily... Look no, at. no, no. Just spill the beans, my friend. We would be very grateful of any assistance that you could offer us. Well, as, I, as, as you see, I am somewhat of a bibliophile. Um, and I always knew that the Reverend Malden had a singularly interesting connection. Um, and so I, um, I might have rescued a few volumes this morning. Rescued from where? Uh, from the church. I see. What, uh, what was the church like when you were there this morning? Oh, well, I... I think it was in a bit of a state, to be honest. The windows all seemed broken. The, 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 the priest didn't look very well. No, did he? Hmm. Uh, and and there, was, there was some young man lying in the vestry, but uh, I, I, I just needed to move him out of the way a bit. Ah, uh, we found our person. Okay. Mm -hmm. Were you wearing shoes when you went there to the church? Yes, of course. Uh, I must admit to a small slip in, uh, I mean, how can I put it, in my devotions. Um, it, um, it seemed uh, rash. Wooden, wooden clogs or something, yes? Across the, yes, yes, I have them just out here. I try not to wear them, obviously. Who could blame you in this weather? An understandable slip. I knew you'd understand. Of course. What uh, kind of volumes did you rescue from Reverend Morden? Well, um, there was, of course, some Paracelsus, uh, some interesting volumes by Albertus Magnus, um, and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, I believe you were um, uh, you were interested in uh, what was it? The creature that the creature that can kill the monster basilisk. Is that right? Uh, as you say, yes, uh, basilisk. The only creature I recall from my learning was the Medusa, but perhaps they have similar origins in their mythology. Well, certainly young, young Mr. Mold, young Reverend Malden was most interested in uh, outre creatures. Um, here, of course, we have uh, um, the, the, uh, the translation of the Rerum. And he flicks open this book, but he's kind of standing as part of a tottering on the table next to him. Then he starts flicking through it, and then he stops me, and he reads. By my by, the world never ceases to amaze me. Did you know that the pelican bird feeds its young by picking its breasts and feeding the resultant exsanguinous flow to its young? You can say, imagine, imagine, such wonders. He turns the page. And here, of course, we see the rock. The bird, the, the bird that is born from a gemstone found only in the Indies. 
Yes, but what of the basilisk? Ah, 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 the basilisk, the basilisk. He sort of... Yeah, here we, here we are. Um, uh, do you have Latin or shall I translate? <coughs> I would appreciate it if you could translate. Ah. This creature, found in the province of Cyrenaica, is not more than 12 fingers long. It has on its head a white spot after the fashion of a diadem. It scares all serpents with its strange whistling. In some parts it resembles a snake, in other parts a bat or bird. It is said that one of these, being killed with a spear by one who was on horseback, and its venom flowing along the spear, not only the man but the horse also died. It spoils the wheat, and not only that which it touches, but that which it breathes upon. The grass dries and the stones are split. It is necessary for to catch a basilisk to set an open jar of uh, urine of the female species, for they are in irresistibly attracted to such. One must beware the basilisk's fatal glance. However, to look at it in a mirror is safe. And if it can be caused to look into a mirror whereupon is inscribed a pentacle, it shall surely die of its own gaze. Ah. Well, fascinating. Hmm. Elias, do you have a mirror? A mirror? Oh, Lord, no. I, no, no mother, mother and I could never afford such luxuries, I'm afraid. As you see, all of my time and money is devoted to the acquisition of, uh, uh, of uh, books. What might double in place of a mirror? Polished silver, perhaps? I, I dare say. I'm, I'm afraid I'm not very much up on my on my Roger Bacon and his treatise on optics. I do, I do have it here somewhere, and he starts to wander off looking for another book. No, 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 no that would be fine. You said there that it said the, uh, the urine of the female of the species. Would that be the female of the basilisk species? Uh, no, no. I, I, I think usually when, when talking in such terms, um, he was referring to, um, uh, 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 to to us as men and and, and females of, of of that kind. Uh, women, that would be women, women, human females. Yeah, indeed. I see. Well, there you have it, Sharon. All we need is. A, I will be right back. A polished silver plate and uh, a woman to pee in a cup. And we're golden. I'm I'm gonna head back to the uh, the other hut. Well, so we... wait, wait, please don't don't wander off without me. We should stick together. Uh, this this all this learned stuff is more your affair. I I was going to go collect the urine. I didn't think you would be interested in such. No, we should stick together though, given that there is a uh, a basilisk on the hunt. Fair enough. Uh, that, that is wise. If you were to be struck down on your route to collect some woman's urine, I mean, how would I know? Ah, smart now, man you are. Mr. Elias, you said that the mirror had to have a, a was it a pentacle inscribed upon yes. it, within it? Yes, indeed. Upon it, yes? Yes, indeed. And a pentacle is a pentagram, correct? Yes. Uh -huh. um, one, one of them is two-dimensional, one of them is three-dimensional. I can't remember the difference. I see. Well, thank you very much for your assistance, Mr. Ellis. If we think of anything else, uh, we will come back. Yes, yes, of course. And he sort of, you know, slaps his belly again, which kind of wobbles. Slightly. You uh, keep yourself and your mother safe. Oh, we will surely let everyone know if we, if we manage to delay this creature. Yes, yes, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. Now, what were we talking about? <laughs> oh, right. Yes. Let's go. That was right. That was right. Bacon on optics. Bacon on optics. One. Let me just. And he goes and wanders off into the hall and just leaves you standing there in his parlor. I think it's a good opportunity for us to make a uh, stealthy exit. Okay. Indeed. Don't really need to see any more slapping walnuts. I'm sorry to have put you through that, uh, Gregory. However, 
I think you can agree that the information may prove to be uh, invaluable. Indeed. Now, how exactly are we planning to collect this woman's urine? Uh, yeah, about that. I'm afraid. I'm afraid there's no subtle way to go for it. Well, um, I suppose our best bet would probably be back at the um, at the house. Maybe we could maybe we could use something along the lines of uh, and it, it, it being it, it being used for a poultice. We, we need it to to be a, a fertile urine, so it can't be from a man. And uh, oh, using, I, mean, I, think, I think the truth is our ally in this affair. Don't you agree? Okay. I, I again, I. Surely, Thompson will be willing to help. I, I, I will acquiesce to your uh, your knowledge and your wisdom. And the Hallows seem to be of better wealth than just about anyone else in this uh, forsaken hamlet. Perhaps they will have a hard silver platter which we can polish to a shine and uh, engrave a pentacle upon. Right. He did say he uh, was of some authority here in this town, correct? Mm-hmm. So surely he must feel some responsibility for the safety of the villagers. I'm sure he'd be willing to sacrifice uh, a little bit of, uh, of his own possessions to, to, to save it. Sure. Right. That's my thinking anyway. That's my approach as we go back over. Mm -hmm. the Hallow's residence. Mm -hmm. um, banging on the door once more. Um, the, yeah, knocking gently. Yeah. Um, the uh, the door, the, the sort of bolt is drawn and Hallow's opens the door. B oh, back so soon, gentlemen. C come in. Come yes, in. yes, yes. Uh, thank you very much for putting us on to Mr. Elias. I say with a uh, I glance back at uh, Gregory. Um, he did have some very helpful information indeed. And I think perhaps you may be able to assist us in freeing your town of this horror. Yes, he, he was able to assist you, was he? Hmm. Right. Continue. What's How the matter? You seem apprehensive. Well, you've met him. Oh, he's very eccentric. Indeed. Yes. But he has quite a library. Well, let us dwell on more seemly matters, shall we? How am I to assist you with this task? Well, first of all, we need a large silver platter. Do you have anything of that sort? Something that can be polished into a reflective surface. Um, one moment. Um, Constance, Constance, my dear. The sound of waddling footsteps coming down the corridor outside the parlour, which he's led you into. Uh, she sort of pops her round face through through the door. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, Enoch, my love. What what is it? Does the gentleman require a silver salver or some such, um, such as can be polished to a high sheen? Do do we have such a thing? I'm sure. Well, there's there's the best serving dish, of course, my dear. Fetch it, would you? She goes back out, comes back a minute or so later, carrying a sort of large silver trencher with two handles, one an oval silver trencher with two handles on either side. Mm. Excellent. Oh, but, um, but 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 Enoch, this this was this was the wedding present from 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 my from my mother. Don't worry, you'll get it back. We're not planning to keep it. Well, uh, we are we are not in this business for the, for the reward, uh, the financial reward. You understand? Oh, 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 I'm sure not, sir. I'm sure not. She says. Um, but Enoch, is there really nothing else? Well, there, no, there, there is more. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have a, a pail or a bucket? 
Um, certainly in the scullery, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Could you, could you fetch it, please? As she does so, I'll pull out my dagger and I'll start carving a pentacle into this uh, serving dish. As <laughs> <laughs> you're sort of hacking your way through the silver, Enoch kind of leans across the table that you're doing it on and sort of opens his mouth. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if Constance... Uh, perhaps... Is there not... Uh, but he sort of Do you me. wish to save your people or not? Yes. Yes, of course I do. Well, this is what is required, I'm afraid. But it, it, it was a wedding gift, and, and Constance, she I mean... Yes, uh, I'll need a, some kind of an oily cloth, or what, what would you use to polish silver? I'm an oily cloth. Uh, chamois, a leather cloth. Leather, yes. yes. Do you have, a, like, a, a chamois? Yeah. Um, I am a shoemaker, sir. Yes, of course. I have very many such products. Yes, please. Fetch one. Okay, he goes out. Um... And uh, as he goes out, she comes in, sees you standing over her prized silver salver, carving pentagram to the bottom of it. I'm assuming you carve it into the bottom, at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she just kind of, uh, she's holding this kind of leather pail in one hand, and she her hand flies to her mouth. <gasps> oh, thank you very much. That'll do, do quite well. <laughs> you um, there's oh, only one more thing, then, that we will need. Um, we'll need you to urinate into the bucket, please. You can do so in privacy, of course. I'm, s I'm, s I'm sorry. You want me to... What? Urinate. To piss, please. In the, the, cre bucket. the creature we hunt is a foul thing, and the most purest antidote against this is a Christian woman's urine. I, I, I can. You, you say I can, I can. Do this. In the privy. Of course. Yes. Um, Gregory will accompany you, and uh, he will avert his eyes. Do not worry. Oh. Uh, I, oh, I, I, I'm not sure that I, I'm not. I, I really don't think. Perhaps. And, um, oh, my lady, you must do this. This is for the good of all of England. At this point, Enoch walks in the door and she sort of rushes immediately to him and kind of grabs him with both sort of large, sort of, you know, bingo wings arms and sort of crushes his chest. Oh, Enoch, I'm not sure I can. I'm not sure. I the can. lives of the entire Hamlet, perhaps the entire country, depend upon you, Mrs. Hallows. Enoch, uh, I, I shall accompany you. Shall, let's go. Accompany me? Accompany me where? What's this? What's what's she talking about? Oh, I'll take that cloth, please. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> He's kind of he pluck it from his kind of stunned fingers. I'll start the, polishing them hey, after I've carved the uh, pentacle. The, the evil that we seek to destroy is uh, is defeated, is poisoned by a, a pure Christian woman's urine. And we require it. And he holds up the pail. He sort of looks at you. He doesn't. He, for, he's quite clear for about a beat of three or four seconds. He doesn't fully grasp what you're getting at, and then he suddenly realizes. His Constance kind of squeezes his ribs once more as she's still clinging to him, and he looks down at her, looks across at the bucket, and then it dawns. Oh, and no, it cannot be yours. It must be hers. I see. Uh, well. My dear, what, what, what do you think? I think it's a shameful thing, sir. A shameful thing, my dear. Uh, but they say it's necessary. Well. On the one hand, you pee in a bucket. On the other hand, children die. What's it going to be? Well, when you put it like that, I... And you say that this will rid us of the creature. It will certainly help. My, 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 my dear, perhaps if you go uh, behind the screen within the privy, uh, I, I shall accompany you and, and uh, we shall, uh, uh, we shall uh, ensure all is done with as much decency as, as is possible. And, and of course, we will speak of this to no one. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, I shout from the next room over. Evidently, one would hope. Christmas pudding. <laughs> Come along then, my dear. 
and uh, Enoch kind of puts his arm around her and he's, he's kind of, you know, his very long, thin arm, which even he has to stretch to reach all the way around her ample shoulders. And uh, sort of the two of them almost sort of hanging their heads, walk back out into the hallway and down a long corridor, which leads to um, uh, a sort of uh, a privy block in the backyard. Um, the yard itself is walled off, so they don't feel any particular danger about going out into that, into the outside. Um, do you? So you go and accompany them and kind of hover outside the uh, privy building, do you, uh, Gregory? Right. Okay. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, Gabriel, you're polishing up this uh, salver. Yes, yes. I figured, um, I don't know, maybe it would have made more sense to polish it and then engrave it, but I thought it made more sense to engrave it and then polish so yeah. 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 Um, so uh, after a sort of five or ten minutes of uh, you've managed to get this up to a, 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 a it's a sort of slightly distorting, not a hundred percent, but it's definitely a mirror effect at the very least. And uh, at this point, um, I reckon it's going to be the best we're going to get in this place. Yes. Yeah. I mean, mirror, mirrors are supremely expensive things. What would you use it? Oh, you could use like a little vinegar, couldn't you, to help? Uh, sure. Because you would use vinegar to, to to clean glass, right? To make give it an extra shine. Yes. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that would work. Uh, ammonia as well. Uh, ammonia, right? Some way, yeah. yeah. I mean, ammonia. I know. I remember back in the day, we used to wash the restaurant windows with newspaper and uh, vinegar, white vinegar. But, yeah. Very well. So yeah, get it as shiny as I can while he goes and collects the uh, the piss. Okay. Yep. So she 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 comes out of this uh, small privy building after about sort of ten minutes of uh, anxious uh, attempting, and uh, the bucket isn't very full, but it's definitely kind of sloshing unpleasant. <laughs> Over to uh, Enoch, who hands it to you, Gregory, and she can't she can't even look at you. She kind of buries her face in her hands and rushes off into the kitchen. <laughs> Christmas pudding. All right. <laughs> yeah. You're still attracted to her, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, with, with that in hand, he will uh, nod and make his way back into the room. Okay. So uh, Gabriel is there applying uh, the last sort of touches to the polishing the salver to reassemble in Enoch's parlor. Uh, he follows you in. The last thing to decide, my friend... I say to uh, to Gregory, is where to set the trap. Well, I I, 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 I saw the beast after it, 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 it uh, after it slew Miss Mayhew and her dog. It, it, it fled off to to the north of the village towards Tom Kerridge's um, property north of here. Perhaps we should try to get it inside somewhere so that it has less opportunity to flee. Maybe a barn. Hmm. Sure. Tighten its uh, purview. Now, of course, carrying this with us, we may have tracked it. it may, we may encounter it before we get there, which will prepare maybe, for the worst. Maybe we could drip it, make 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 a small hole and just have it drip, and then uh, use it as a as a drawing trail, and then lead it exactly where we want to lead it. That's hey. A very good idea. Yeah. Hey, maybe we could lead it to maybe we can lead it to a pitfall, and then we wouldn't have to deal with it at all. It, it, it has wings. Ah, fuck! I forgot. I, I, I forgot it was an, un, an unseen. Please, an we're, unseen. In, we're in company here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I do like your idea of leaving a, a, a trail every so every so often to drop up maybe. Drop a few drops to, uh, to maybe. Uh... Yeah, maybe it'll build up and catch in the wind that way. Mm -hmm. Just don't waste too much. Sure. How okay. far is that property? Uh, the carriage, the carriage, the carriage house. Oh, it's it's uh, it's at the northern end. It's the northern. It's the last house on the northern uh, end of the green here, on the north uh, eastern edge of the green. Oh, so not far at all. No, no. Good. Well, last considerations before we do this, my old friend. 
Nope. Let's get it done. Perhaps I will hold the uh, the mirror, as it were, so that you may have uh, weapons to hand. That is a good plan. You're much, you're much better with weapons than I am. Yeah, I mean, you you could. It's slightly ungainly, but you could wield the salver one handed. Just for information's sake. I mean, it's 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 about sort of 80, 70, 80 centimeters across and 40 centimeters wide. My thinking was that I would wield it, I would carry it, because I'm not very good with weapons anyway. Once I'm blindfolded, I'm going to be useless with weapons, I reckon. Mm -hmm. So I figured I would carry that, and that way he'd have his hands free for sword, whatever, sword, dagger, sure. sword and shield. I don't know what you carry. Maybe not. Maybe not so much with the uh, the firearms while you're blindfolded, and I'm in the room with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See. All right. Good. So, um, do you want it? You can. There's two ways of approaching this. You can either go back out onto the green and follow the main sort of street, or you can go out on down down into amongst the lanes and the alleyways and the gardens around the back. Well, I think maybe we should take the lanes and alleyways and stuff, right? Because in this case, I think open space is against us. Because if we do encounter it along the way, we want to do so in a small space as possible, so to try to hopefully catch its gaze upon itself. Don't you agree? I do. So we'll go down the lanes and alleyways, okay. dripping a little piss along the way. Okay, so you going to go out into there, into Hallows' walled back garden, where he unbolts a back gate, which leads out onto um, into this sort of tangle of um, sheds and outhouses and what have you. And he sort of points to the fact that there's an alleyway which runs north south of the property. And he sort of indicates. He says, if you if you follow this until you get to um, a, a similar sort of walled uh, garden like that, that's Kerridge's garden. Um, and then beyond that, you'll see his barn. Very well. That's where we want to go, to the barn. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Lead him to the barn. Okay. So you sort of head north. Thank you, and uh, with any luck, you'll hear from us again soon. If we do not return, then you can assume that we have failed. Uh, God willing, I shall see you shortly, gentlemen. The Lord go with you. Well, if we fail, at least now you know the uh, the way to defeat the creature. We would have shared that information with him, like what the, the urine was for and what the polished silver and the pentacle and all that was for. So. Sure. Yep. Okay. All right. Just in case. In case we do fail, maybe one day somebody else can help. Okay. So he sort of shuts the uh, stout wooden gate in the brick wall behind you as you step out into this alleyway. Um, and sort of crunch through the snow. The, the sun is now westering. It's nowhere near dark, but you know, you've only got about maybe two or three hours of daylight left. You're not a religious man, are you, Gregory? No. Shame. Neither am I. Well, if we lead it to the barn and it flies, we, may, well, we won't be able to fly out of the barn. Perhaps we can be ready with, with fire. So then in worst case scenario, we could trap it in the barn with or without us and burn it, burn it down. Um, potentially. I don't know if fire would, would harm or kill such a creature. But I, don't, I don't know either. I suppose it's a, a last ditch effort. Sure. Could lead it to uh, maybe we can make a, a mound of hay. I would, I would prefer to uh, to do this without sacrificing our own lives, if possible. Of course, no, no. I meant if if we had fallen is what I was thinking. Mm. Oh, perhaps you could set. You you have plenty of match cord for that rifle, don't you? Right. Very true. Perhaps, perhaps once, we, uh, once we get set up, you have a, a bit of a match cord. Uh, do you call it a fuse? Right. That you can light. So once the creature arrives, that way, if we don't defeat it in a certain amount of time, then the, the hay catches fire. Right. Maybe make a mound out of the hay and leave it like a like a small cave out of it and put the remainder of the bait in there. Mm, good idea. 
Okay, cool. So do that. What I think we'll do. So this barn, do they have like one big kind of double door thing or single door or? Um, yes, as you approach it along this alleyway, um, you sort of come to the, uh, what is obviously another sort of brick walled sort of garden, which is the one that uh, Hallow has described to you as being Carriage's garden. And yes, um, just to the east of that is, it's not quite big enough to be a barn, but it's a substantial shed. It's sort of uh, maybe 10 yards wide by six yards deep and um, okay. four meters or three or four yards high. With, a, with okay. a pair of a pair of uh, large double doors on the south side, so facing you as you approach. In the short trip over there, did we pass either any uh, farm animals and or bells, like a goat bell or anything like that? Um. Yeah, I would. I would say that you could. Um, uh, you'll pass um, a, a sheep pen with half a dozen sheep, which will have those little sort of um, spherical little sheep bells on them. Sure. All right. Is there somebody attached to this sheep? Not oh, physically. What? <laughs> not physically. I meant like a barn and a house. Um, this is England, not Wales. It's it's all um uh, i mean yeah i mean it's it's all it's all somebody's property and they are in a little sort of um wooden uh, pen but um nobody's obviously obviously since there's nobody else on the streets other than you nobody's watching okay well we're going to secure one of the one of the sheep with a bell and bring it with us yeah, I mean, they're, they're A, quite placid and cold, and B, well used to human contact. So, you know, it doesn't take you long to corner one and grab the grab the uh, bell and slit the rope that's holding the bell onto its neck with a knife. Very well. We're going to use the bell as a, as a telltale that it's there, so we don't got to look at it. Good call. I was thinking um, what we should do is set the bait at the back of the barn, yes, as well as your your kind of fire trap, etc. Um, and it's a double door, right? So we get on each side of the door, one on each door, basically. And once the creature is inside, we're blindfolded. We can push the doors closed quickly so that it can't get out easily. And then uh, and then we go to it. You know, I've got I've got the. I've got the, the the cutlery, the silverware, and you've got the uh, not cutlery, but you know the servingware, and you've got the um, the weapons. Let's do it. So let's go set it up. All right. Okay. We'll do, we'll do the little dripping on the way, mm -hmm. uh, leading in. Build the little hut out of it, and try to make the most direct path so that once the door shut, he just aims at this one spot. And in fact, he could probably set up a a marker of some kind, like a stick in the ground, that if he if he wet if he goes up against the two sticks, that it lines up for the wherever that is, and then he'll fire at that, and hopefully it'll hit it. So you, you pull open the doors of the barn, and you can see it's quite crowded with winter fodder. There's lots of sort of hay, drying hay on sort of racks, and there's a kind of mezzanine level with just sort of a meter or so clearance, which is also full of fodder as well, and a wooden ladder which leads up to it. Um, off to one side uh, but it does mean that yeah you've essentially got an even smaller enclosed space on the, on the northern end of this little barn-like building <coughs> <coughs> the floor is earthen um, and you sort of dribble the urine in as you sort of make your way in and you can just literally just place the bucket in the bang in the center of the wall you know in the middle of the wall on the northern side of the building um, there are laying around various kind of um uh, on the wall, there are sort of various bits of ha leather harness. There are some tools, um, a couple of sort of a long, long handled spade and a long handled hoe, which you can use to set up as sort of markers by the barrel if you would like. You know what? I wonder if, I wonder if I tied, if I tied down the the gun facing the bell and put a string on the trigger. And the bell goes off. I could just pull the trigger, and then it would already be pointing right at it. Well, it's a it's a it's a blunderbuss kind of scatter weapon, isn't it? So yeah, it's it's ideal for that. That's exactly what he's going to do. While, while uh, we set everything else up, that's what he's going to do. Okay. Uh, 
so you set this you set this all up and uh so basically you've got the shotgun sort of propped up on a bale of hay or something with a, a, a length of match cord running to you standing by the yeah i would think i would think to tie it down to like a post or something so that it actually doesn't move mm -hmm. at all and then uh sure. have it pointed pointed directly at where the bell would be mm -hmm. so if the bell rings it'll pull the pull the string and go boom okay sure no problem um, so you sort of just do you just basically suspend the bell over the rim of the bucket or something? Right, exactly. So you're sort of standing there in the cold now. Do you are you putting the blindfolds on now, or are you going to wait for some indication of? I think I'm going to have it right over over my eyes, almost, so that it would only take a nudge to put it down. Sure. And Gabriel, the same. Yep. Okay. So you sort of spend five or ten minutes setting this, setting all of this up, and eventually you kind of creep back to the edge of these wooden doors, um, and stand sort of. You've got a standing sort of three quarters cover behind the doors, so that you can sort of roll them shut, as it were. Yeah. Um, with you sort of standing left on the inside when they close. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you stand there, and you're. Acute. It's like I have my blindfold pulled over. I, I just I keep having the, the urge to peek, but <laughs> okay. And that peak only gets stronger when, after about maybe five or six minutes after you've set up and are waiting in the cold and kind of trying to sort of rub your hands together to keep warm, um, both of you make me uh, uh, perception rolls, please. Okay. <laughs> You are uh, not the boss to me. Yeah, 48 under 67. I got a 36. And my perception is a 34. So he did not make it. Missed it by two. Okay. Um, but you are you are you are warned by Gabriel's sudden stop and tension that something's going on. Okay. Um, the strange sound of sort of, you know, the sound of somebody sort of, uh, almost like sort of, you know, making a snowball, that strange crunching sound, mm -hmm. of crust of snow mm -hmm. broken. It's, yeah, it's, the packing of snow. Yeah, it's very much like that, but sort of in several quick motions. <laughs> right. Like, like, it's like an 80 pound four legged chicken. I got it. I'm trying not to uh, to make a sound or move or breathe or anything. I'm trying to be as quiet and still as I possibly can. Okay. I want, it, I want it to be drawn to the bait, not to me. Exactly. Okay. Both of you make me stealth checks, please. Stealth. Stealth? I didn't oh, that is only my shit. Yeah, you have basic stealth at least. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I missed it by two points. 26 uh, over 20 now 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 in this case mechanically speaking since he is prepared would that perhaps add a small measure i'll take it into consideration go ahead make your check i failed by two points anyway. all right stand by uh my role is survey says I oh i got a 13. i made it i made it very easily i have a 50. okay nice. okay so both of you are now blindfolded yes Oh, yes. Yes. You can hear the sound of the snow crunching. And then it's sort of, uh, uh, Gabriel, you sort of sort of move your shoulder slightly and you sort of something, uh, you know, like a sort of uh, your sword belt or something just taps against the wooden door. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the sort of skittering, snowy crunch outside stops dead. And then it restarts. But uh, both of you, uh, perception checks again, please. Both of us do what? I'm sorry. Perception check. I I still didn't hear you. Perception check. Percep perception. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, sixty-four under sixty-seven. Twenty-four, yes. and I made it this time. I have a thirty-four. Okay. It's definitely, um, in my head, for some reason, I imagined that, Gabriel, you were behind the left-hand door 
and Gregory, you were That's behind. kind of the way I measured it too. I yeah. was exactly that. Right. Yes. I don't know why I thought of it like that, but anyway, okay. Yes, um, this 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 sound is definitely veering off towards the left hand side of the door, and it's now very close to coming inside. But it's not inside yet. Not that you can tell. It's it's slightly disorientating. You're lucky that it's very quiet, um, and the snow has that strange deadening effect on echoes and noises. You know, noises off, as it were. Um, so you think you've got it pretty accurately, but it's definitely heading towards the left hand door where you are, Gabriel. After that failed stealth check. Now, okay, so. Mm, I don't know any of this. Yeah. Damn it. No, wait, 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 what, why don't you know? Well, you, 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 you know that it needs and to you look at it. perception. And you, and you need to look at it for it to be fatal. You know that because of what Hallows told you about the widow and all the rest of it. Right. Well, how far away would you say the bucket is where the bell is? The, the the shed that you're standing in is probably four meters from the door to the back wall where you place the bucket. Keeping in mind how long the string is, he put a great deal of time and consideration into the placing of it. Mm -hmm. His friend's going to die. He's going to run straight forward towards the bucket. Where, where the where the bell is and uh, if if the noise does follow as he suspects it will uh, once he reaches where the pile of everything is he will hit the ground and pull the string <laughs> okay so all this takes place in total blackness as far as you're concerned yeah I have no idea what's going on in the space of these few seconds so um, Gabriel, you're sort of standing there acutely aware that this sound is getting closer to you, it feels like, when suddenly off to your right from where Gregory was comes a series of very obvious and unsubtle footsteps with him sort of creaking in his buff coat and various sort of, you know, his uh, apostles for his pistol rust, rust, you know, rattling mm -hmm. as he just appears to run back towards the back wall. In, underneath that sound, you hear suddenly and much less subtly the sort of <laughs> sound of footsteps, first on snow and then the, the sort of strange thup, 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 thup of this, foot, of this uh, something walking across the mud floor, of the earthen floor of the barn at pace. They run straight past you at the door. So it's inside. Gabriel, yep. They run straight okay. past, thup, thup, thup onto the earthen floor and then suddenly you sort of you're aware Gregory as you sort of hurl yourself on the floor near the bucket of something very very near you and you can hear this sort of strange rattling croaking sound pulls the string and I'm following through the plan trying to close the door okay so um Gabriel it's very easy for you to close the door you literally just walk forward and the door will yep. close in a semicircle around to close it. Pull out that silver platter. Okay. The okay. Uh, can you? I'm wondering how we're going to do this. I think what we'll do is we'll make it a straight up 50 50 roll for a gun, a stationary gun fired blind into an area. Fair enough. Seems seems reasonable. Okay, go ahead. Make I, I'm going to tell you what my role is, and you tell me which of the fifty it falls into. Well, you want you want you want fifty or less on a D100. Twenty-two. Boom. Okay. Now the question is, do you get hit as part of the splatter? It is what it is. He hit the ground, so. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Um, Give him maybe uh, like a grab kind of a dex roll, something like that. Like a a two times deck or something like that. A dodge. Yes, I was about to say, a dodge seems fair. Dodge, yeah, dodge is, dodge is a thing, isn't it? Thank goodness. Look at that. Now, dodge space now, is now we actually fall into the realm of things he has scores in. <laughs> <laughs> he has a 50 in dodge. Go for it. A 17. Okay. So basically what you do is as you pull the string, you sort of roll all the way. So you, you roll away from 
do you want to roll away from the buckets or do you want to try and hug the back wall even closer? Away from the I'm going to leave it completely, completely up to you because he's blindfolded and there's a four-legged 80-pound chicken chasing him. <laughs> well, um, uh, I'm going to work on the assumption that you're going to try and keep yourself orientated so you hug the back wall so at least you know where you are. That sounds like a great plan. I'm glad I thought of it. All right. So it's, uh, now the question is, can this thing, this thing has a dodge rating as well, actually. So if I gave it to you, I think I should give it to it. What's it yeah, dodge? but I was expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> That's certainly true, but it failed. He, can, he, he, I think the GM probably would say, if we were to pull GMs in the group, that it would roll at disadvantage. <laughs> I think you said it failed anyway, so. Oh, okay. damn it. Uh, so it's got that, and it's got that, but it's a gunpowder weapon, so it only gets one of those. So, do, 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 do. Okay, the, uh, the blunderbuss, which is effectively what it is, goes off with a deafening boom. Um, you, Gregory, are aware of the sound of little bits of metal buckshot pinging through the wood, break, pinging through the wood just above your head, and splitting the barn door, splitting the barn timbers um, just above your head. Um, there is a, 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 a sort of alarmed uh, screech, followed by the sound of scrabbling, uh, strange footstep footsteps running away from you towards the barn door, which is half closed right and i've got the silver platter out in front of me and did you want uh, did you want the damage or no uh yeah go ahead. Oh, okay. five two four six so that's a total of 17 mm -hmm. okay with that okay yep so it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's scuttling off back towards the door. I'm holding the silver platter up in front of me now, in front of the, uh, well, let's see, I, I guess I would know that the other side of the door didn't close, didn't, don't I? I? I could sense that probably since I heard him run off. And... You can infer that from the fact that this is kind of very cold draft. And... So no. I will step out into the draft, trying to kind of get it over, it, you know, covering the, um, as best I can, the, the part of the door that didn't close. Yep. And uh, holding the thing in front of me, and I'm just calling out. Uh, I want to say this thing. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm speaking some, probably some stupid fucking gibberish or, or poetry that <laughs> I, I read somewhere. Okay, so you step up into the into the gap, uh, holding the holding the salver up, sort of angled as you sort of think. You know, it's probably near the ground somewhere. So you kind of hold it at a sort of semi, you know, a bleak angle to the ground. And um, for a split second, you're sort of there's a, t a strange silence permeated by the stench of black powder, which is now filling the room from the uh, blunderbuss blast. And at that moment, you feel something not very heavy standing on your foot, Gregory. Not Gregory, sorry, Gabriel. On my foot. Yes. Um, okay, and I've got the serving platter. Yeah. Yep. And then the platter was a bowl. This was a serving bowl. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's effectively a tray. A tray. Okay. Cool. Um, so I'll. I just have to assume it's the creature. So I'm gonna. I think actually, probably what I'm gonna probably do is I'm gonna probably try to swat it with the <laughs> with the tray. Okay. You, you know, like whack. Yeah. Go ahead. Double handed. Make me an unarmed combat roll at. Oh, Christ. You're blind, aren't you? Oh yeah. I think we're going to half that. So half your unknown combat stat. Uh, I rolled an 82 over 8. Okay. <laughs> you, you flail this salver down towards your, sort of, towards your foot, um, yeah. but meeting only empty air, as rather unsettlingly, you feel these four little sort of bird-like, quite sharp claws, not sharp enough to draw blood, but sharp enough to kind of catch and stick mm -hmm. in of your uh, britches as it starts to climb up towards your knee. Yeah, uh, I'll fall back onto my back and pull the platter up in front of my face. Okay, Gregory, what are you doing? Uh, he's gonna pull both pistols out and keep it back to the wall. Okay. Jesus, I said no firearms when you're blindfolded, man. <laughs> okay, you pull out 
angels, you hear the sound of uh, you hear the sound of presumably Gabriel falling to the floor, um, presumably muttering "oh" under his breath, or possibly quite loudly. Yeah, probably pretty, pretty loudly at this point. I'm just uh, I don't know what was. I guess he's just going to since he's, he he knows the general area he is. He's going to point them forward, and. And nothing. He's just going to keep it back against the wall and keep them both pointed forward. Okay. Low, low to the ground if he can. Okay. So now these four cold chicken's feet claws are scrabbling and scratching up above your knee. Um, can you please make me a resilience check, please, Gabriel? Uh, I can try. Uh, no, 38 over 22. You failed? Yep. Definitely failed. Okay. Suddenly, on your shin bone, it feels like somebody's sort of scratching at you with an icicle or something. Intense cold on your shin bone. One point of damage. Oh. Ah! I, I kind of cry out in pain. Um, and uh, I say, Gregory, it's, it's, it's on my shin. Stab it or something. He'll fire one of his pistols. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna give you your firing blind, but okay, go ahead, make me your gun combat roll, please. <sighs> Let me switch this back. I gotta switch this out of, out of damage. Hold on, I was on damage mode. Okay, here we go. I rolled it. Good. I rolled a 20. I rolled a 29. And my gun combat is a 50. Oh, no, 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 no. That was close combat. I'm sorry. Um, gun combat, gun combat. Oh, gun combat is also a 50. So you missed it, but not by a huge amount. Um, oh, you were halving it? I see. Are you firing blind? Yeah. I'm okay. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay. So another loud concussive bang sort of uh, shakes the walls of the barn. A lump of snow falls off the roof. Um, Maybe it'll distract it. What the? <laughs> the lead ball whistles, fortunately, because you were laying. Actually, no, what it does is you hear a loud metallic ping as the lead ball buries itself into the salver. Jesus Christ, you were shoving in the face. <laughs> uh, this thing is now above your knee, the claws scratching away at you. Gabriel, what are you doing? Um, again, I guess, you know, because I'm holding that platter up in front of my face kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I was trying to protect my face. I was afraid it would come up and claw my eyes out or something or try to claw the mask off me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do kind of like a little sit-up kind of move, you know, or a sit-up. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm going to try to smash it, smack it with the uh, the platter, try to knock it off of me. Okay, go ahead. Unarmed combat. Um, minus, well, not, well, for unarmed combat skill? Uh, my unarmed combat is 16. Six, one, six. Yes. Unmodified. Correct. Okay, go ahead. Make the roll. Uh, 80 something. 83. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, it's, yeah, it's a miss. You, you nope. sort of sit up and put, you almost kind of push it, as it were, as if you're trying to push this thing off you. Um, but you sort of misjudge the angle. And although you make contact with it, it's not a sufficient force to kind of move it. It's tenacious. It's kind of got hold of you with these four claws. Fair enough. I'm just waiting to get shot now. <laughs> uh, you can also please make me another resilience check. Oh, I doubt it. But uh, no, nope. fifty-eight that time over twenty-two. Okay, the cold, this intense cold, is creeping up your leg. It seems to be sort of del a delayed reaction to the creature passing over you. This time on your knee joint, cripplingly cold. Two points of damage. <laughs> Gregory's going to use that scream to anchor him, and he's going to run straight forward and draw his uh, sword as he runs. Okay. So you're now wielding sword and pistol, yes? Correct. Okay. So you sort of uh, using using the uh, the walls of the barn to kind of lever yourself up, and uh, are you basically you're just running towards the sound of the screaming. Yep, as he's, he's, I imagine he's yelling. This is all happening pretty quick, so he's going to probably be yelling a lot. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I was already shouting poetry, and now I'm shouting in pain, so. 
<laughs> okay, so you rush across the barn. Uh, give me a dex check, please. Dex times mm, three. Dex times three. Uh, my dex is not that high, actually. It's a, a 10. All right, and I got a 32, so I just missed it. Okay, you... You almost put your foot straight in the bucket of piss, but actually you glance so past it and knock it over instead as you rush across the barn uh, sort of to where you think the sound of the screaming is most obvious. In fact, you can kind of feel um, uh, Gabriel's leg sort of thrashing and flailing around. You actually actually sort of kicks you a little bit. So you've got a reasonable idea that you're pretty much standing over him. Get it off, get it off. He's going to swing the sword. You're going to swing a mortuary sword. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he either gets the bird off or he gets my leg off, I guess, right? So go ahead. I, I've got a much better chance of hitting it with a sword in mechanical sense than a pistol. Go for it. Okay. okay. I am going for it. I'll re roll it if you want me to, but I rolled a two. Then you rolled a two. I rolled a two. Go ahead, roll the damage. Okay. Oh, why did you want to re-roll it? The, I, I'm just, is this in case it was a... I want to keep my leg, please. Um, the sword is a D8. Correct. 1D8? No, right? Yep. Yeah, 1D8 plus my strength. Yes. So 1D8, I got a 1D8 6. Plus 1D4, right? And I have 1D4 for my strength, mm -hmm. and I got a 4. So a total of 10. Out of 10, it gets... Plus the 17 from before. 10 plus the armor points, which is that. Okay. Um, it's strange. The sound it makes is a bit like somebody standing on a cockroach. It's a sort of chitinous, semi-liquid crunch as the sword bites into something. Gabriel doesn't scream immediately, or at least his the pitch of his screams don't change rapidly. Right, that's more appropriate. <laughs> um, and uh, his, you, Gabriel, you keep kind of flailing the platter around, but you're aware almost immediately um, of the the sort of uh, these kind of claw-like things crawling up your leg. The anim the sort of animus behind them sort of stops, and it's just, the pressure uh, eases immediately. The thing is, st it, you can still feel the weight of it on your. It's now kind of up your, at the top of your thigh but it's no longer moving, but you can still feel the weight of it on your leg. To the top of one of my thighs, yeah? Mm hmm Okay. Great. Gregory says, I'm swinging again! And uh, could you please make me a resilience check, please, Gabriel? Yes. Um, no, 54 that time. Nope. Okay. Uh, this time, it's... Um, I don't know whether you've whether you've ever had that sort of strange, peculiar sensation. It's it's sort of like a dead leg, but much more aggressively. Mm, pinpricks. It, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I've had something like that anyway. So yeah. it's, it's like a severe case of that. Yeah, it's exactly like that. Numbing, deadening the entirety of your leg from the knee up to the groin. I can't feel my leg. I'm swinging my sword. Three points of damage. Yep. I am at half. Okay. But there's no sense of movement anymore on your leg. It's just a dead weight. Cold, unpleasant, but dead weight. Well, swing your sword again, just in case. I, I, I don't have time to stop you. I, I, was, I was saying it out loud. Hopefully you were, you were going to tell me not to. <laughs> oh, um, well, I'm not, I'm not sure that... It's dead. Um, okay. Yeah. He has no idea, so he's going to swing it again. Okay. Well, I guess he could try to kick it. His friend is right there. You, you said his leg was where it was since you hit it last time. Yeah, he'll, he'll kick it on that last moment because he knows that he got lucky or he killed him. One of the two. He's just gonna. He's just gonna reach out and kick out with okay. his leg. Uh, unarmed combat. Okay, I rolled a 30, and his unarmed combat is, survey says, again, a 50. I raise all of my combat stuff to 50s. <clears throat> um, technically, you missed the half for being blindfolded. Okay. So actually, what you do is you basically manage to kick Gabriel in the knee. Fair enough. Does it hurt, or do I not feel it? 
you you can feel it as a sort of dull thudding sensation. Oh, oh I felt that. And, and it's still not moving? Nope. I'm going to reach down with my uh, left hand and try to push it off of my leg. Oh. Okay, your, your hand sort of slides down. You let go of the keeping hold of the salver with one hand. You let go of the other. It's so very cold outside. So what he meant to say was his gloved hand. Of course so, my hands are gloved. But... Uh, I, was, uh, I was working on the assumption you were wearing gloves, actually. I don't know why. But yes, um, uh, you sort of uh, reach down with your hand and sort of reach down, reach down, reach down. And then you feel this kind of weight um, and sort of laying inertly on your thigh. And you sort of push it with a jerking motion and yes it rolls off and you hear a soft sort of wet thud i think it's i think it's dead okay um falling back on memory what uh just mechanically what um skill check would you do for memory of locate like it, it was there a horse blanket or something like that in the area what would you what would you call for that well what i was thinking to do is i will get up and i'll lay the platter over it not that, yeah, it's not that big. While you're it's doing not, that. How big is a chicken? I know it's an 80-pound chicken. But... Well, the platter, of course, also is also flat. It's not a bowl. It's right, right, right. right. Um, how, but, about, how about insight? I was thinking to just lay it on top of it. Sort of, uh... Uh, yeah, go ahead. You can make me an insight check for remembering something that was lying around. All right, no, like, my... like, like a piss bucket? No, I got a 71. I didn't make it. I'm going to pull my blindfold up, but I'm only going to look up straight in the air. Okay. And yep. I'm going to look around the top of the barn and then slowly down, but I'm only going to look at like the, the six foot mark. I got you. Um, I got, got you. Um, yes, there, there is, um, uh, there's a sort of a, a saddle post with a, a saddle and uh, various uh, riding accoutrements, including a horse blanket hanging on. Okay. Up. He's going to get the blanket and hold it in front of him and lay it down. And where where it would be, and then use it to to find it and slide it out of the way. I was gonna say while he was doing that, I will take my cloak off and wrap the creature up in it. Good call. Good call. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, it's a bit fiddly to do whilst blindfolded wrap, wrapping the creature up, but it's it's also a very strange sensation. From one minute to the next, it's kind of this soft downy feathers, and then the sort of you know you you, you brush your hand against its tail, which is kind of cold and segmented and scaly. Yeah. Um, and uh, sort of at one point you accidentally sort of scratch the back of your glove against one of its kind of just extended claws and it, you can feel it kind of scratching across the leather. Mm. And uh, But you eventually managed to get it wrapped it up. Now, with this horse blanket... What's and he comes over with a horse blanket to put over it too, yeah. Might as well yep. double wrap. Yep. Well, you can just, yeah, throw it once, once it's... Um, uh, you can sort of, you know, communicate to the other, okay, now I've wrapped it up. No, over here, dummy, throw it, you know. Put the blanket down here. Yeah. So between the two of you, you can kind of secure this thing. So then I will try to lift my blindfold and peek out. Yep. Um, you've basically just got a large blue gray horse blanket, like <sighs> a, a, an unidentifiable lump. Now I, I suspect I suspect like the if the flesh is poison that that the, the blood is poison as well, so I wouldn't want to get any of it on us. Well, you can see straight away that um, looking down at Gabriel's trousers, there's a whole series of kind of stains and smears which seem to correspond to the points where he was feeling that kind of chill effect. You should probably get your pants off, mate. Um, right here, right now? Really? Poison? It might kill you. Yeah, take them off. Okay. Uh, now, now I'm cold. Well, I have my I have my cloak. You can have my cloak. Um, wrap his cloak around my waist and legs. I guess. The high, okay. we're, we're at Highlander style. Yep. Okay. As you're sort of making these preparations, there's a sort of. What do I do with this thing? There's a strange noise coming from somewhere not far away from you, out further out of town, north, you would guess. A strange, rhythmical clank, 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 clank. Mmm. Reinforcements. I draw my sword. Is it clank, clank, like what we're used to hearing back with the, the machinery and all that? 
Uh, if you have heard them before, which you may well have done, yes, this, these are clockwork. This is the sound of clockwork troopers on the move. Oh, well, good. God. Yeah. Hopefully it's uh, whatever his name was. Captain Happy, I hate all things. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God, Horrington. Horrington. Yes. The Inoclast. Hmm. It gets louder and louder until it's kind of quite definitely on the, uh, must be on the green, just sort of slightly a few meters to the west of you on the far side of the carriage. Over here! Yep, he'll be waving. Over here, over here. Um, they probably can't hear you over the sound of the clockwork, which is kind of echoing around the uh, the green, bouncing off the walls of the houses that surround the, the village green. But after about sort of three or four minutes, the sound sort of gradually comes to a winding down stop. And you can just hear a rhythmic chunk, 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 which is the sound of the clockwork at rest. Okay. Well, you keep, is, you keep crying. Is, There's somebody yeah. in the clockwork or someone controlling it? Um, it's basically it's they once what they they once they stop they can't be restarted without being rewound. So when they come to a pause, they very naturally slowly keep unwinding to keep going. So you can restart them as it were without having to rewind them up. I got you. Um, you can hear the sound of boots walking through the snow in the alleyway behind you, um, and then a shadow falls in front of the door. Several shadows, in fact, um, a tall man with a sort of uh, looking dressed quite like uh, Gabriel's picture there, in fact, with a sort of stovepipe hat and sort of flowing locks, mm. white, white neckerchief around him, um, a sword at his hand, and standing behind him, four tawny-dressed, um, lobster-pot-helmeted members of the new model army, clockwork troopers with carbines. <laughs> Praise God, Harrington, presuming it is him, glances at Dean, looks at the pail of urine, which is beginning to be one of the strongest smells in the room now, apart mm -hmm. from gum. Are you he Harrington? At, he, looks at the, he looks down at the salver with a pentagram inscribed on it. Well, now, what have we here? Some mm -hmm. sort of foul chimeric beast released by those awful apothecaric witches. And he'll kick at the, the lumpy form underneath this, the, the cloth. He says, don't look at it. That's what's been killing everything. He looks down at the, sort of the horse blanket on the earthen floor, looks up at you. I see no beast, but I see all about me. <laughs> And smell in the air the stench of Satan's works. You're Harrington, correct? I have the honor of being addressed as praise God Harrington. Parliamentary appointed iconoclast for this region. Well, I'm Gabriel Thorpe, parliamentary commissioner, appointed to Blah, 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 whatever our, our actual mission was that we were sent to do. However, along the way, we st stumbled across uh, your unfinished business, and we took care of it. I see. You, uh, you're the one who fled this town and left these people to, uh, to deal with the creature on their own, correct? Not so. I merely yeah. went who find these esteemed gentlemen of the clockwork troops. Oh, that's a good thing that you found me. Who are, of course, under my orders. Mm -hmm. Very well. Well, here is your beast. He sort of looks down, at the, looks down at the blanket, and there's a tiny flicker in his eyes of hesitation. By all means, feel free to inspect it if you wish. He sort of looks at you. Oh, I, 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 I hardly think that is necessary when we have such clear evidence here. Surely the Reverend Malden could have not carried out his foul practices on his own. 
he would have needed assistance. He would have needed others capable of moving about amongst the godly, undetected. Are you accusing us? I merely go where the evidence leads. And what do I see before me here? A pentacle inscribed upon an item of silver. And, of course, we all know the role that the foul and despicable effusions of humankind play in witchcraft. Mm. So perhaps you'd care to explain your role in all this. Well, I imagine we have papers of uh, contract to be here, correct? Or was okay, it a verb? Contract is where we were going. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Yes, you have a. Do you offer it to him? I'm presuming you're carrying it. With Absolutely. You. Yeah. Okay. Takes it out, unfolds it, looks at the seal at the bottom, and I'll start to tell the story. Say so we were riding along when we came across a church. Doors opened wide to the winter air. We decided to investigate. Inside, we found a priest dead, uh, another man dead, and signs of uh, alchemical work, which I then promptly destroyed. <laughs> oh, you, and you have a witness to all this, of course. Right here. I gesture towards... Uh, okay, your co-conspirator. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Fellow parla par loyal parliament. Why don't you tell me what really happened? You'd arranged to meet Malden at the church, hadn't you, for more of your foul alchemical experiments? No, that we followed the tracks back to this village. Perhaps you were merely royalist couriers hoping to slip back across the Humber unnoticed by loyal and godly men. Is there anyone else other than, uh, than uh, you know, happy god Harrington here? Yeah, he's got his four clockwork soldiers. Besides the clockwork soldiers? No. Nope. Why don't we get Mr. Um, Hallows? Can ask him what we've done. Or even that crazy, uh, what's the crazy bastard's name? Elias? Mm -hmm. Elias, right? <laughs> you don't seriously imagine that we're going to take the word of uh, some lunatic Adamite or that foolish cobbler in this matter, do you? He turns well, to that the, foolish cobbler is the figure of authority in this hamlet. Is, which only goes to show how backward and remote this place is and in need of uplift and guidance. Well, you uplift and, and you guide them because we have another mission to get on to as we fell upon this one and took care of it. Indeed. And I'll just kind of look at, um, I'll look over at my uh, co-conspirator. And uh, then I'll look kind of at the blanket, questioningly. And I'll look up at her blindfolds. Yep. Sort of, Harrington can sort of feel the moment slipping away from him. And he sort of, uh, for, he hesitates for a second and then he sort of runs and in a couple of places. He's standing over the blanket and he throws it aside. And there's your... I turn away and uh, pull right, my blindfold over my eyes. Yep, I look away also. <laughs> okay. Um, you hear the sound of him throwing the cloak open. Something wet and chitinous falls onto the earthen floor as your cloak, cloak unravels. Um, and seconds later, you just hear... <gasps> and a sort of thump. And then another thump from the door. And then another thump, thump, thump in quick succession. God damn it. At the corner of your eyes, you can see the four cavalrymen just immediately just drop like stones onto the floor. Yeah, I've already got my blindfold back over my eyes. I will try to get back on the ground and try to find the blanket and cover up the corpse again. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, maybe go, give me an uh, insight check to see if you remember where he kind of threw the blanket because he sort of tossed it aside. It is that son of a bitch. Uh, insight, you said, right? That's good. I rolled 33 under 62. Yep, okay, you can place it directly. It's it's just off to your right, about mm. a yard or so. Um, so you sort of uh, step at one pace over to the right and then bend down, and you can kind of feel it, pick it up and feel it. Yep. Uh, you just kind of sort of turn around and flap the blanket so it goes out to its full length and drop it on the floor. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Right. I think we should get the hell out of here and go alert some um, authorities to come and clean this up. Absolutely. I should probably head back the way we came and let, let them come to here and do the full investigation. And then we'll carry on with the mission. Mm. We okay. can't be too terribly far. Um, we'll, what do we do with this, uh, this bar? Close it up and um, we'll tell the cobbler. Yeah, we'll, we'll, tell Howell's, we'll, tell, we'll tell Howell's not to let anybody in here. Exactly, we'll under we'll threat of death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, evil, the evil is in the barn, and we're sending people to oh, get What about these um, dead clockwork soldiers here? We drag them in there, too. Would, would, they, would they follow the next person in line, or are they assigned? How, how does that normally work? Well, they're dead. Clockwork soldiers fell dead? Yeah, they all fell dead. Oh. Right, so I should make clear that they're, they're humans... They happen to they ride clockwork uh, mounts. Oh, yeah. that's what I'd asked earlier. Okay, very good. Okay, well, we'll just let the cobbler know that there's evil in the barn and don't let anyone near it. And they're sending people to deal mm. with it. Good. Let's go. Okay. And before so, somebody else can show up here and accuse. And definitely let the cobbler know that that uh, that him and his wife were instrumental in stopping the evil. Okay. Yes. Here's your platter back and your your bucket. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the, the two of you um, sort of uh, clamber back on your horses and uh, head back out onto the main road. With a little bit of luck, you might make the next village in before it gets full dark. And there we will call it, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Really well, cool. That was great. It was great. Cool. It was a really interesting little uh, adventure. Yeah, it was very good. It's a cool setting. It's a very cool setting. Yeah, yeah, no, I like I like the setting a lot. I'll, I'll definitely be. Can you uh, before we go actually click on your uh, your camera thing? Yeah. Can you show us the uh, the book? So the uh, we can. It is. The well, I, have a, I have my blindfold on. <laughs> You're not That's tricking cool. me. And who's that published by? It's uh, it's published by Renaissance. Renaissance. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Oh, Very awesome. cool. Uh, well, I don't know. Renaissance seems to be the kind of imprint, but it's according to this, it's by Studio. This it might be Studio Two Publishing, possibly. Hmm. Gentlemen, look. it is. Uh, oh, you want to stop the? Yeah, I'm gonna stop the recording. Second. I just wanted to get a little bit of this on camera. Real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. In case anybody yeah. watching is interested in the game. It's Good call. Um, just having a look. For a, yeah, I mean, it's it's as I say, I think probably Clockwork and Chivalry, um, second edition by Renaissance, yeah. probably find it for you. Pull, pull, hold the book up, pull it backwards a little bit more, and then over to uh, your yeah, right, yeah, okay. over to your right, and there. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, Thanks, yeah, we, yeah uh, great setting. Good cool. game. Good, thank you.